All right, day three, about to kick off now. Tyler Steyer versus John Moore. Tyler is leading 50 to 47 after 97 racks, only three apart from these guys. We are racing to 75. We'll finish tonight for $80,000 in the middle. Awesome match we've had. A lot of momentum swings and a lot of fun watching these guys. Hope you all have enjoyed the action. Plenty more coming today. This is Kyle Ferguson with you at Rail Yard Billiards. We're in Louisville, Kentucky. We recently wrapped up the Mini Derb Open just before these guys kicked off. The new tournament we started. We're about 20 miles from the casino where Derby City Classic is held. All these guys headed there right after this. If you're coming out to Derby, make sure you swing by and check us out. We'd love to hang out with you for a little bit. Meanwhile, Tyler is going to kick us off here with the first break. Lost his cue ball a little bit on that one, but uh, not going to hurt him at all. Gets the ball in the side pocket down and a straight in shot on the one. So great opportunity to uh, start things off the right way here for Tyler. I'll let you all enjoy this uh, this first rack while I finish up a couple things, and I'll be right back with you shortly. Uh, later today, throughout the day, we have uh, some awesome commentary coming your way. Jason, J. Diddy Sword, Fedor Gorst, Josh Roberts, and Scott Frost, all scheduled to pop in the booth here at some point. So it's going to be a lot of fun today. Appreciate you all hanging out with us. Uh, this is Kyle Ferguson. I'll be right back with you.
All right, this is Josh Roberts. I'm going to jump in and commentate for Rail Yard. See if we can get it going, help him out a little bit. Well, Tyler's got a shot on this four ball. John just missed. And uh, five's right there, so a little outside English to come back towards the middle of the table. It's nice and easy. Just like that. Uh, he's got the perfect angle to just go one rail and uh, come right towards the six. Now, I don't know if he'll try to go around or you know, move the cue ball, but he's got an angle to just go one rail and go right back toward the six here. I would say keep it simple. Just one rail back toward the six. A little outside English, just a touch. All right, and he's got a nice angle to hit the rail and come toward the nine, or he can come down below it and shoot it in the side, just preference. <clears throat> I'm gonna move the cue ball less if it's my choice, so I'll be playing for the corner where he's standing now. Uh, putting the cue ball in that area to shoot the nine down in this lower right corner. <clears throat> so he could draw this over to the right rail or hit the bottom rail and come over. Either way is fine. He just needs to get over to the right long rail. And he's done that nicely. He's got pretty straight. All he's got to do is stop here and he's straight in on the 10. gone after this 10 he'll bring that lead back up to three all righty 51 48 splitting the first couple racks here Definitely seems like anybody's ball game from here, Josh. Yeah, it does. Uh, the difference is uh, John's not starting out so far behind today uh, yeah. as he did yesterday. Yeah, if you look at uh, the day, he won by eight because he yeah. finished down 11 and uh, finished down three. So. Definitely look forward to seeing how this day unfolds. A lot of momentum swings yesterday. It seemed like... Uh, they were kind of trading big, big swings in the score back and forth. They were. They definitely were. Both of them seem to have gotten a little irritated here and there. And, you know, try to snap back in it. Yeah, and it's tough. You know, anytime you're playing for this amount of money, it's hard not to have that in the back of your minds. You've got a lot of pressure on you. Oh, yeah. Once you're playing, though, you're already in it, so you just got to, you know, play your game. Sure. Do, you know, do what you're supposed to do. That's why the guys are betting on you, right? Yeah. Right. That's that good break. Didn't get the greatest shot on the one, did he? I think he may have to play safe here. Yeah, a little um, tight to the rail for the for bank, I think. Yeah, it's very close to the rail for the bank. Yeah, I don't think he wants to do that. He can't pinch it enough to shorten it. Uh, I think he's going to play the safety here. So you're banking this one under the four, and you're going one rail behind the seven is my, my choice of safety. Uh, I would just tell him to be mindful of the speed of the one because you don't want it to come all the way over where it gets on the you know long right. rail because then you, it's an easy ball. If you, you, want it, you want it to stay on that bottom rail. So... <clears throat> I think that's where he's going. I think he's just looking at the angle. He's going to come off the rail to get towards that seven. He could even put the one like right around in between those <clears throat> diamonds right there, in between the middle and the uh, first diamond to the right, and uh, get the cue ball behind the seven would be ideal. That way you're using both of those balls. Yeah, yeah. May even introduce a little bit of uh... – funny kick with the five ball depending on where the cue ball lands. Yeah. 
have to navigate around that. I think he's worried about hitting it too hard, and if and if that is the issue, he can hit it a little bit thicker and play the one into the side rail and make sure it comes back out. But I like it to stay on that bottom rail where it's not cuttable. Oh, I can't say that I to like get, that. Yeah, he trying to get behind out. the four. Yeah, he sold out. He outthought himself. He was, he was thinking the right way, he create the distance. You got a ball to hide behind, you know going this way if you don't get the safety then you you know it's always like i was saying yesterday you get if you know even if you don't get the safety you still have the distance as your friend right. when you take away the distance and you don't get the safety then you sold out sure you know, so. yeah. kind of an insurance policy especially right. if you get it to exactly. the center diamond exactly. all you're ever going to leave is a bank right it's basically a two-way safety sure yeah. makes sense I don't want to hit the tin ball. John moving the cue ball a little bit. Lucky he is naturally right-handed, so he shouldn't have a problem pocketing this ball. I would say that he's going to have to shoot this right-handed to make it. It's either that or uh, get the bridge. I definitely don't like the bridge. I think he's got to shoot it right-handed. Yeah, huge advantage for John being able to play so well with both hands. He's not cutting it. He looks like he's going under the three with the cue ball. He's going to play safe. You called it. You know, even though he got a good safety out of it, I can't say that I agreed with that because I felt like the two is very cuttable. Yeah. And he had the whole table like up and down, threes right by the pocket, and you had a big, huge gap in between that five and ten to go up and down the table without hitting anything. Sure. And being naturally right-handed, I felt like he could have easily cut that ball in and it just went up and down. Yeah, you know, you never want to give uh... – Give your opponent any more opportunities than you have to, right? Uh, to create right. something good for themselves. I mean, he's done well on the safety here, but sure. you know, I'm just, I don't know. Maybe on just the, a little that. early in the match, you know, not quite feeling ready to take on a, a tougher shot just yet. Yeah, I guess. I'd say. I mean, I could see if you're far away from that ball, he was close to it. Sure. You know, that's what that's what made it so attractive. You know, what I mean, and like if it was a lot of distance in between when you're trying to cut it thin, then that's hard to do, but. You know, you're that close to it. Always great to get uh, get insight. Joined in the booth here with Josh Roberts, a great player in his own right. Love picking your all's brain. Helps uh, helps us mere mortals learn a little bit in the process. Well, I wouldn't say great player, but thank you. I, I would <laughs> I would say shortstop. Describing myself, but you know, whatever. <laughs> It's always hard to judge ourselves. You're you're a great player. I'll, I'll I'll go ahead and let you know. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sure thing, man. Appreciate that. All right. So Tyler sold out now. Straight in on. Well, he's not straight in, but he has a clean shot on the two in the side. Um, I think he can just draw it out to the middle toward the spot, or maybe even across the spot. I like having the angle going into the long rail off the three but he may come all the way over to the left rail where he's going into the bottom around the 10. Just depends on what he likes. Okay, he went to the bottom, but he still kept the angle that I was talking about, so he's going to hit the long rail and come on over for the four. That's better. Yeah, it seems to be a really common pattern sort of playing side rail, side rail shape, right? Right. Yeah. Well, in this case, you know, he can hit the three ball thick enough where he doesn't even have to go to the second side rail at all. Gotcha. He can sure. just, you know, cross the sevens path and he's good. He may go to the second side rail, but in this case, he doesn't have to. He's hitting it thick enough where he can just get it out to the middle of the table and he's good. He went to that second rail, like you said. Good call. Yeah, and it seems uh, we've heard from a few different players throughout the week. Uh, the mini derb event we ran here as well, that uh, the table's just playing a little quick this week. And so you seem, tend to see the, the players favor the extra distance on the cue ball uh, whenever they have the choice. All right. Well, John's looking good for this game. Um, just gonna pocket this, get up for the side pocket. Either side of the seven that he lands on in the event that he doesn't land straight, he'd still be okay to play shape. Mm -hmm. 
So he came a little short, but he can hit this easy enough where he can just kind of float forward and just pocket this and just nice and easy stay right over there. Yeah, yeah, kind of like a little slow roll, let the weight of the ball slow down. Right, just just roll it in. You don't have to do anything with the cue ball here. So he's out from here. This will give him a 49, so back within two after this 10 ball. You know, if you look at the uh, the way that day two yesterday started with John making such a big comeback, if he were to do the same thing here, we could be looking at a blowout 60 plus, you know, 50 margin. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think John is uh, playing with a lot of confidence, especially after cutting that lead down twice. I heard he cut the lead down. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, he, he, Tyler had a big lead and he cut it down pretty big. Yeah, yeah. Tyler reached uh, ten ahead uh, at, uh, later on in the set, and then, of course, finishing the day just three behind. So you know, John's got to love that position from where he was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go pack up my cues. I don't want to misplace them or anything. Yeah, I don't want to lose those things. So 51 to 49, our score here. This is the last and final day. We're racing to 75. First one to get there will win $80,000 that's been posted in the middle. Healthy little bet between two guys that want this really bad. They uh, both spent a lot of time here, the days leading up to this match, as well as... Uh, before and after hours of this match, practicing, working on their games, figuring out the strategy. It's been a lot of fun. I think, uh, you know, both players were feeling the heat a little bit yesterday. We have uh, right behind the table that you can't see here, um, or, or rather right underneath the camera, there's a uh, set of tables uh, that were set up for viewers and both players actually requested that we remove those chairs because they felt like it was a distraction, which is uh, not something we heard anything about, you know, on the on the first day. And obviously, both of these players well accustomed to playing in an arena with with people watching. But uh, you know, a lot of pressure out here in this match. These both these guys want to win really bad, and you could just tell that uh, you know they really wanted to kind of control the environment the best they could. And we obliged. We're happy to make that happen for both the players. So they both agreed on it. Uh, pulled out the chairs and hopefully they can play distraction free here but you know at some point too they, they are in a pool hall you know it's uh, both players playing with headphones and kinda, yeah, they're fine yeah kind of got to keep their focus I was just saying before you joined uh, it was kind of funny that last night uh, one of them came up and requested we remove all the chairs from the back table and then 10 minutes later the other one came up and requested the same thing so both players kind of <laughs> sharkened themselves a little bit but talking about this right here no no where the where they have their scoreboard posted they wanted those chairs removed because they felt like it was a distraction to have people that close to them and, well it is because they yeah. want to talk and you got to listen sure. to their conversations and sure. stuff because obviously yeah. they're not going to be quiet right they're going to talk sure you know somebody might come up to them or whatever and ask right. them a question who knows yeah you know. but yeah it was, it was just funny the timing of it was like literally 10 minutes after uh i believe uh John was the first one to request it, and Tyler, 10 minutes later, came up. <laughs> so we were happy to oblige and uh, make sure they comfortable to do what they need to do. So. It's actually better to have the higher tables. Like, you see how you have that? Like, if you yeah. had that around the arena... When, when when the players are down on the ball, they wouldn't be looking at somebody's face like sure. eye to eye and the eyeball. You know, if they were yeah, sitting yeah. up higher, they they wouldn't have to. Yeah, know, makes sense. In the face. Totally. And we do have. Um, we actually just purchased a set of risers, uh, so we plan to build it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Build the build the arena up a little bit, and uh, like you said, kind of raise the the spectators up. Right, create kind of a pit. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, I think it's better for everybody. You know, it's a better view of the table if you're a little bit elevated. You can like, see you more see, of it. You see what just happened right there? Clean, right. Cleaning the cue ball. Just clean the cue ball, but look how close to seven is. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you realize just a little small 
that much could give you completely what you need it. to. You know, that's why I don't like that. You yeah, know what I, mean? I agree completely. If the cue ball's out in the middle of the table and it's not going to matter on your shot either way, then fine. Sure. Okay. Sure. But when you're that close to the ball, I don't want you touching the cue ball for yeah. no reason. Oh, I agree completely. I always heard that that was, uh, you know, one of the little known tricks of the the, yeah. the, the match room style events is yeah. to request a, a cleaning whenever. It's <laughs> well, it, it's funny that you say that now because uh, Jeremy did that last year when he was playing, not this year that just passed, but last year when Errol couldn't play. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jeremy requested to clean the cue ball, and they didn't stop the shot clock. So yep. by the time the ref was done cleaning the cue ball, his clock had ran out. Yeah, yeah, it cost the match. Yeah, and I don't understand how is that how is that possible that – you know, you don't tell a guy, hey, well, the clock's not going to stop if I do this. Right, right. You know, how do you not say that? You know, because I've seen uh, lots of guys ask, and, and then look, look, he had to, he yeah. had to shoot it, tw- you know the, what I mean? The direction that he right. was, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he had to shoot it that way. Like, yeah, I, I totally understand what you mean. Yeah, I don't like that at all. You know, I'm not saying he did anything untoward, but that would be the time to do it. Sure, yeah. You know? Anyway. I'm going to eat my lunch real quick, yeah, and I'll yeah. be back to join you in a couple of minutes. No problem. In any case, uh, Tyler Steyer with the chance to run out this rack. Really, this uh, this shot here is kind of the key. If he falls good on the four, everything else gets a lot simpler. Back and forth here at the, the beginning. Of course, we're only a few racks in, but if it's any indicator of the, the way the rest of this match will go, it's going to be very interesting. Haven't had any uh, player look like they're going to run away just yet. from Tyler there just swinging the cue ball three and around came up a little bit thinner than he would have preferred on the six but it's not going to cause him any problems the seven's wide open has a uh, a wide open top half of the table to navigate through so nothing he needs to worry about ruining his plans Rails around the back of the seven. So he's left, uh, you know, left a little bit more work throughout this pattern than uh, he probably had to. Probably just doesn't quite have his uh, speed dialed in for the day, of course, very early in the match. All the balls were kind of out there just sitting but he's fell where he's had to move his cue ball quite a bit so created slightly more difficult shots certainly ones that uh, you'd expect him to make 99 out of 100 so not too much of an issue but just an indicator that maybe not fully settled into the match just yet Tyler Steyer makes the out to pull back ahead. 
by three games, 52 to 49 over John Mora. One of the things to watch through today as well, um, you know, we are at an earlier part of the day. People are working. It's a little bit uh, relatively quieter here in the pool room. We can take a look at the overhead shot here while Tyler racks. Just a few people hanging out watching the beginning of day three. Of course, that will change as the evening goes on. We're expecting quite a few people to show up. We have our regular patrons in addition to those coming in just for this match. And so both players seem to be irritated at different points yesterday with some of the commotion that, uh, you know, nothing too crazy was going on. Just we've got a lot of pool tables, a lot of people coming in to play on them, and uh, a lot of excitement around this match, of course, as well. And so I'd be interested to see if uh, one or both of the players has any issues today with uh, getting distracted. Go back to our live view here, Tyler Steyer to Break off in rack number 102. Only three games separate these guys after 102 games. It's, uh, it's pretty wild, really, when you think about it. That's the one ball to drop. But it, uh, It stays up, and with the 2-4, the Tyler's going to be in a tough spot here. I'm not even sure where you can push to. You're either going to be able to see the 1 or not. You can't push to a jump. And the 6-4 uh, the makes the kick so difficult. A quick look at our overhead here. See just what he's faced with. Yeah, I'm really not really not sure what you do from here. He's taking a good while to think about it. Push. I mean, I guess you have to push somewhere to, to try and kick. You know you're going to get it back. So I, I guess I would just be looking at uh, where do I have to go that I think gives me a, a, a chance to make a hit on this ball. Of course, all you have to do is hit it and it'll fall, but the other thing he's looking at doing, I didn't give much thought to, is you could make the one ball here. And try to leave something more difficult on the two. That's a good shot there. Um, you know, definitely making sure the four ball followed. If it stays in the pocket, John has an easy route to make the four and, and place shape on the two. Very creative and, and good thinking from Tyler there. Something I definitely missed was just uh, making the one ball. Of course, having a full ball to look at here, John's still going to have the uh, first opportunity to take control of the table. Really, anytime you push, you're kind of expecting that you're going to get the worst of it one way or another. his cue ball to travel a little bit here. I think he's okay. It's good speed. Looking right down the line of the shot from the booth here, I think that Tyler can see the edge of this ball. It's po two ball popped off the rail just enough. That's the case. I think you'll see him try to thin this ball to the top rail. Main thing is where does he go with the cue ball? The uh, the nine and the three are big balls if he's trying to swing his cue ball around down table. Keep looking, having a look now if he uh, were to kick behind this ball. 
So the, uh, the shot choice here, kicking three rails behind the two. He's called it in the bottom right corner as we look. Just came in uh, quite a bit long. He had to try to spin and create the angle he wanted around the 9-3. Uh, the Just overdoing that a touch and... Uh, Caught the six ball, so John's going to have ball in hand here. Good opportunity to pull back within two. Again, just uh, a lot of back and forth here at the beginning of day three. John in uh, great shape here. I think I definitely like staying underneath the seven ball here. So no need to try to force your way above it. Eight balls close. Angle he has, he'll just stun over to the right rails. We look his left, it's nice and close to the seven ball. Can't see anything stopping this one. That's uh, one thing that the good players do so much better uh, is that they're not shooting as many shots from distance. Cue ball control is so good, they're able to get closer to the ball, it's always going to increase your potting percentages. Just uh, speed control here, pull back for the 10. John Mora back within two. Fifty-two to fifty, Tyler Steyer leading over John Mora. We're racing to seventy-five today for all the cheese.
Both players so far really looking to be in pretty good form. No major mistakes. A couple uh, maybe. Uh... All right, give me just uh, one second. Need to jump out of the booth and take care of something real quick. I'll be right back with you. Sorry about that. Uh, back with you now. So, rack 103. John Moore at a break. flat with this cue ball than uh, more flat than he'd like, which is possibly why the one ball traveled more center up table than towards one of the pockets. He is still able to get one of the, uh, the side pocket balls down, so still has control of the table. Pretty good shot from John. Looks like uh, looks like Tyler can see a piece of this, but I don't believe he has enough to make the ball. I don't know though. It is it is close. He might be able to. It's a matter of uh, what's going to happen with the cue ball hitting this so thin. Oh yeah, definitely had enough and the uh, cue ball bounces off the rail. He'll have a long tester on the two ball and like a three six. I think he can just drag straight over to the rail. So not much to do with this cue, that'll help.
All right, Tyler Styers off to the races in this rack. The only possible uh, funny shot where the seven sits. Make sure you get good on that ball. Frozen to the rail, close to the side pocket. He has the five ball close by. I don't expect it to cause too many problems for him. Having a look now on where he wants to be. Always a good idea to play three balls ahead in rotation at least. So he's playing shape on the five ball for where he wants to get on the seven ball. Continuing through the rack in that fashion. Sure, he may have fell a little straight in here for what he wanted. He does have a little bit of angle, so I think he'll uh, he'll have enough that he can pull over. Come up with a good shot on this seven, probably shooting it all the way down table versus uh, bringing that side pocket into play with shape. Just stay above it here. Great stroke there, had to uh, let it out to force his ball over, it was stunned. Just get this ball down and uh, road map from there to extend the lead back to three. It's just been uh, trading racks back and forth here since the beginning of today. Don't wanna jinx Tyler, but Definitely a favorite to get this one down. And just as I say that, you know, it was a tough shot. He's not left anything uh, offensive for John. You're going to see him play defense here. Might be able to use the eight ball, take his cue ball two rails behind that. Has to be very careful with his angle, though. Anytime you're removing the, uh, the object ball out of the open, you've got to get hidden. Could also see him just thin off the left side of the seven as he looks and take his cue ball down table. That's what he's having to look now. A little bit... Uh, a little bit more forgiving to go that route if you do happen to let him see the ball. Worst case scenario, looking at a bank shot. <coughs> what he likes to do, would like to get behind the 10 though. So Tyler's gonna have a shot here. At least a shot at controlling the table. I don't think you'll see him take the bank on.
tough shot here for John, but all he needs to do is make the ball. I have natural position on the eight. And uh, this would be the first two game swing of the day. He's able to get out here, pulling within one. Great shot there, dead center of the pocket. Phone going off in the crowd. John's going to get the extension. I think if I was to make a prediction today, um, if Tyler's able to maintain a lead, I think it's going to stay tight all the way to the end. But I just really have a feeling if John's able to pull ahead early here, um, I'm not sure if you'll see Tyler come back from it. Just the way this match is gone. Of course, anything can happen. Both of these players are uh, super talented and capable of winning this match from any position. But just a gut feeling that I have. Pulls within one, 52 to 51, Tyler's lead. We have played 104, or I'm sorry, 103 racks of pool since Monday, and one game separates these guys. Absolutely incredible. I am going to take a quick break. We're going to have Josh Roberts jumping back in the booth here momentarily. And uh, in the meantime, you all enjoy the action. Kyle Ferguson coming to you from Rail Yard Billiards in Louisville, Kentucky. Make sure you like and follow our page. We've got a lot of great events this year uh, coming up similar to this. Make sure you don't miss out. We'll be right back with you.
All right, back in the booth here. A little bit of a back and forth on this rack, but John coming out on top in the roll forward here, and we're going to have a tie ball game. Fifty two to fifty two after one hundred and four racks. We are all tied up here in Louisville, Kentucky at Rail Yard Billiards. John Mora versus Tyler Steyer. Eighty thousand dollars has been posted in the middle on this one. It's a race to seventy five. Made a uh, made a prediction early in the match. I think if if John's able to do what he did yesterday and get a, get ahead, yesterday Tyler was able to fight back and uh, regain a lead of ten. But I'm not sure that you'll see that today. That's that's my prediction. Of course, it could go either way. Both of these players, uh, absolute monsters on the table. But I just kind of have a feeling that uh, in order for Tyler to win, he, need, he needs to maintain a little bit of separation from John. Kind of get this rack, create a little bit more distance, maintain the lead through the day. He may stay close, but uh, that's going to be the key for Tyler to win. And I think if John's able to pull pull ahead, I'm not sure that you'll see Tyler get back in it. Again, just a uh, off-the-cuff prediction. But we are all tied up here, 52 apiece. Welcome back to the booth, Josh Roberts. Thanks. Lunch was good. Good, good. See, John's tied it up. Yeah. A little bit of a flat break, but he still made a ball. He's got yeah. a shot on the one. Yeah, second time we've seen that flat break from uh, from John, and it worked out last time too. Maybe uh, just need to stick with it for a minute as long as it's working. Right. He's got a natural angle just to pocket the one. A little bit of a high outside spin. He can uh, float right over above the seven there and uh, pocket the two in the side. Uh, now, I like to cross the straight in line, so he's coming down the table um, off the two ball. I mean, you could get there off the side rail, but, you know, you have to kind of force it, put a lot of side spin. Um, so... Nice medium speed. Good bit of outside spin to make sure he stays above the seven. He's a little nervous about going near that seven. I can see that. Uh, if he draws it, he'll be on the wrong side of the two. Now, he could just play the other side of the two and go around the four, seven, three rails. The middle of the table is wide open, so he would be able to gain enough speed. No problem. He hit it beautifully, and he crossed that straight in line. He's got a natural angle to just make the two and float down for the three. And uh, four is sitting right there next to the two ball. So uh, he'll need a nice little angle to come back up the table. And the five goes in either pocket down here by the ten. Um, so he has quite a few options to run out. Uh, really just keeping the cue ball out of trouble would be key. So I like coming all the way down on this rather than playing it short. I like getting all the way down the bottom rail here. Yes. Yeah, from here, uh, not a lot of trouble. He maintains a little bit of angle. I think he can go forward two rails, right? Yep, two rails forward. And uh, try to get the cue ball out in the middle of the table where, uh, you know, pocketing the four is not an issue. So I like to get nice and close on this ball. You know, at least to the side pockets or close to that area. I'm going to uh, jump out of the booth. Got to finish up a couple things here with the the pool room. I'm gonna That's fine. I got it. let uh, let you and Martin hang out for a little bit, and I'll be back shortly. Sounds good.
right, so there's the two rail shape getting out to the middle of the table there. Got a soft angle on the four going to the left rail, which is pretty good considering where the five is. So he's going to force it into this left side rail and try to get it off the rail where he has plenty of room to cue it up. Um, Hi, everyone. What's up? Martin so, here. Hey, Josh. So we're all square. Wow. Good. Turned out to be a real tight match, right? Yeah, it's tight. So he didn't cross the straight in line. He's, he's, he's actually, if he draws this ball, he's actually got to compete with the side pocket. So he needs to be real careful here. Like, I think he can draw it past the side, but if he were to, like, cut it to the outside of that pocket, then it would go towards. Yeah, Camry 3 would show us. Yeah, he's going to have to hit the rail before the side, maybe come across to the yeah. right side of the table. Maybe he can just like just before the side and then just keep it there. No, he's gonna go all the way. Okay. Got a little bit funny there. Uh, he's not. He's not. He's not terrible here. He could actually just, if he was comfortable, he could just roll this in. Yeah. And it would bounce off the rail real softly where he yeah. had a little angle. Um, yeah. He's, he just, he's gonna go inside. Yeah. yeah he spin could it. put the inside, but the inside, you know that. that oh no! Changes. Now he now he changes mind. He's looking at it. He's just yeah. looking at it. I think he's got it. I think he's straight enough where he can actually draw the cue ball into the into side the real rail. side and go. Yeah. yeah, come back out. Yeah, if he wanted. Yeah, he's just looking at what he. You know, no, he's going, back going to inside. inside. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like I don't like shooting these shots. I like inside English. I actually use it quite no, a bit. That's why I don't like it. Well, it, it kind of sucks to use it with a Predator, to be honest, you know, because it, cause it's not, it's low deflection, so it's a, it's, yeah, it kind of curves into the yeah. ball when you use it, you it's, know. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, how do you call it in English? Uh, it squirts a little bit more than the Predator. It's a touchy yeah. shot. It's a, it's like, you know, if the spin doesn't grab in time or the other way around, I don't like that nice. shot. Well, see, that shot is just, my point is that shot is a lot easier with the cue that, oh, see, 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 I don't like that. Like, what? Look, I mean, this is the second oh. time he's moved the ball, like, you know. Ah, uh, okay, he, yeah. I just well, if it's, I if just it's John's like, okay with it. I yeah, mean, I just don't like that. Like, the, the other time, you know, he did it, and it was, like, right beside a ball that he had to shoot past, and he cleaned the ball, and then he He, sh he should have let somebody else clean it, the thing, you know, or whatever. I, I just don't like that. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like when uh, the cue ball position is maybe compromised and you so the ball. So what's Tyler doing here? Holding it? Yeah. Did a nice job holding it. Mm -hmm. Did a nice job. He'll probably go ahead and go below the nine ball, I would say, right? Get down here where the nine's in the side or corner. Yeah, well, let's see a different view. Yeah, nine definitely goes in the side. So it just does. Cut it in, just come down below you it. You don't think he'll go inside here and just hug the rail? No. No, I think it's much easier just to cut it in and come right down between the uh, gap and between the 10-9. Uh, because it yeah, gives but if him you, two pockets if you yeah, come down here. Yeah, probably right. Yeah. But and, what and it is with the, with the overhead, you, you actually, yeah. Well, see, just think about it this way. Just like John just missed that touchy inside shot, hmm. you, you have to put inside on this to hug the rail like you're talking about. Yeah. The way I'm saying, he just has to pocket the ball yeah. on the top English, come down the table. He's going to bump it. Yeah, I wouldn't have recommended that. Definitely wouldn't have recommended that. He got away with it, though. Yeah. What was my coffee? Oh. Yeah, he got, he, he got away with it. He went into it there. Um, definitely could have come down past it, but that doesn't matter. What matters is he's got a shot to get out. And he's going to uh, take the lead back after this 10 ball. Yeah, straight in 10. Uh, Johnny's, uh, from what I saw from uh, from the side, um, John's been breaking better than yesterday, right? And squatting the cue ball a lot more. Yeah. A couple yeah. of times, right? 
Big yeah, break? he's still getting that flat break, but it's been working for him. He's, he's, he's breaking them real flat. Oh, okay. I saw two breaks. You uh, I'd like the, the Tyler break. Yeah, so Tyler. I thought maybe, maybe uh, he caught the... Yeah, that was a big shot. That's why I was saying I would just pocket that with top English, the one that John missed, the uh, seven. Yeah, just ball. just hold it. Yeah, the inside, because I, I think he would have ended up. With, I mean, with the a inside, shot. the inside. What I what I what I meant, the inside is so uh, for me is so difficult. You know, you got to take a lot of. Um, you got to correct the angle that much when you're using that that much side, and right. from a distance. From that distance, it's uh, for me. That's just a little bit too touchy. I understand. I understand. Yeah, but I mean the, the the shot that that Tyler had on the eight ball, he had, was much closer with the cue ball. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So with the inside, what I meant, hug the rail. Yeah, but I mean, you know, he I, did. I, he, he did use a little bit of inside, I think. Yeah, he did. He did. He used the inside and, and ran into the ten. But I, yeah. I felt like that was risky. He could have easily went in behind it or in front of it, where he had a funny shot on that nine. Hmm. You know, he just so happened to hit it right in the face where he got the separation. Yeah, right? exactly. Just need to answer some messages. What you just said. Oh. Yeah, that's what the shot I was talking about earlier, where you yeah. were shooting past this ball and you were playing the cue ball. And, and, you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. Say peace. <laughs> Do I have you on Facebook, Josh? Won't tag you. Wait. Got most of the top players. Uh, Josh Roberts. Junior? No. Okay. No, I had you. Oh, I did, I did, I did a quest, but you, you probably get like a thousand. <laughs> Let me cancel the request and then. Uh... Yeah, I did, I think. Oh no, no. I oh, got a page as well. Okay, I'm gonna like that one. Already did. I know, I know, I know, I know this one, but I'm gonna follow that one. Or may maybe um, are you on the website, not on the app? No, if, if you go to. No, it's Frank not. Request, like yeah. Right well, I just did. So I don't think it will show up like in uh, at the top. Wait, I'm gonna shut my phone down. If you go to the app, oh, you're you're not on the app. You're on the on the on the page, right? Big break again. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, so I can tag you. 
Okay, let's get back to the match. So Tyler uh, broke him uh, pretty good again. Just didn't get, uh, I think he's hooked by the two, right? Let me see. No, he can see the one. He's got a line. He can see the one. Okay, yeah. He can shoot it in. I thought from here it looked like maybe I know. You know, the sixes looks like it could be a little close to in the way, but I think he's got a clear line to make it. Yeah, he does. Yeah, see. Yeah, camera, camera three, three will show us, yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. Decide, right? Yeah, well, I don't like trying to draw this since he's so far away. I like mm -hmm. going forward here and just going around the seven, shooting the two in the yeah. left side pocket. Yeah, yep. Because the three is available, yeah, it's three natural. and four in the other side, right? Yep. So, yeah, if he can just hit it with a pure stroke and go forward two rails. I think it's best. Maybe, he, maybe a little touch of inside. Yeah. He's going. Well, the seven is there, so I think it will somehow be in his uh, line. It's a perfect shot. Well, now he's perfectly in line. He's got the proper proper angle to go to the three. The four is sitting right there. Everything is. Uh, yeah, just roll this in, right? Yeah, these four Dead balls weight. right here can go on the side. The four, three, the two, the three, the four, and the six. six. Yeah. And then the seven, nine, ten. So yeah, shouldn't shouldn't be uh, having any problems uh, right. getting this one well, he's down. Got, he's got a good bit of angle on this two. Ball. Yeah, but I think that weight roll it in, right? You always have that nine ball. Yeah, no, I don't think he's worried about the nine. He'll just be going to the wrong side of the three to get to the four in the side. But he may have to like move the cue ball a little off the three. Or, yeah, or natural natural angle shows me. Right? Dead weight. Yeah, dead weight. He went dead weight. I didn't realize he could hold it. It looks like yeah, because it a little bit harder like would be on the nine, right? Right. It didn't look like he could hold that angle, but he's good from here. He can just draw back and shoot the four in the same pocket. And uh, he may not get to the six in the side. I can't tell what kind of angle he's got. It looks like he's pretty straight on the three. So if he's going to the six in the side, he'd have to shoot the four and come hmm. around three rails. Yeah, I'll probably go for that. If you straight in, oh no, he, he does have an angle. He can cheat the pocket. That. It looks like it's aimed at the high side of the pocket. Yeah. He does have an angle to get below it the way he's pointing at it. Oh yeah, he had plenty. Yep. So, float right out above the seven there, shoot the six in the side. Yours is off, mine's off. So just a touch of draw just to get across the seven there. Oh, he rolled it. He did roll it. He got on top of the seven. Right. That's why I said draw so you stay away from the seven. I bet I think he's still good. Uh, he may be, but I mean are they are they playing are they playing all ball? Are yeah, that's what I asked yesterday. It's well, he, get has an the right, he has the left side of the cue ball anyway, so he doesn't have to bridge over the seven. I think he can cue up yeah. the inside English and pocket the six rather than elevating. Yeah, he's got half like one third of the ball. Yeah, see he can cue up without elevating, so he's yeah, fine. He's fine. It's a little risky though, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. got the correct angle to either go to the rail and back out to the middle <clears throat> or maybe try to hold right there and just make the nine from you know a few inches away from where the seven is yeah i think a little bit of draw now here will maybe a little bit of I don't know, the outside last time, the last time he uh had this angle I thought he, he, was he went on the rail he went to the rail yeah and in. so i would say he's gonna go to the rail yeah he's going middle of the ball so Pockets in the way for a good bridge. Shorten up your bridge. Put your hand on the table. Yeah, put your hand on the table, I think. Oh, he's good. He's going to go to the rail. He's using top, though. See, I, I, I would use a little bit of... He, he left yeah, himself he just left himself a little longer, a little I guess. Longer, yeah. I think that's fine. 
I don't know. That extra foot for an old man means a difference. <laughs> you know, there's yeah. a little young boy for snappers. They can see everything. Yeah. They don't mind shooting them long shots. Yeah. I, can't, I can't see no more. I need to be close. Yeah, same with me. I get- and that's why we miss, miss more balls, right? Right. <laughs> we miss more balls. We, we want to get closer to the ball. <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, it was actually really perfect, perfectly straight in. So, yeah. So Tyler wins back two racks. Go fifty four, fifty two. So let's see that break again from Tyler. Yeah, that's that break again. Oh, the two balls funny. And I think you're off. Oh okay, yeah, there we go. yeah, there you go. Yeah. yeah, the two balls funny, but yeah, like you said, it is close. Yeah, they're close together. So if he were to get right above the two, he could manage the combo, and yeah. he could maybe get in between them from where the one is. He has a nice two rail angle. Yeah, two rail there. angle. Yep. So I, I'm playing for the combo. They're so close together that if you just float right above that two ball, you yeah, but you're go be able the same route, the right? Combo. With the top, top yeah, left. Yeah, top. Yeah, top inside, and yeah. just get above the two rather than trying to go in between. Mm. I think the combo is plenty manageable. That's what he's looking at right now. I would get right on the rail, try to freeze it right on the rail above the two is what I like. Yeah. He's be, his skill ball has been pretty pretty solid the whole match from what I saw when he had to get in between or, or, or even close to ball. So I think uh, he's favored to uh, get, get good here. I don't like going in between them. I like, no, not I like in between, above, but, yeah, you know. Above the two. No, no, above the two. Yeah, a little bit hard there. He did hit it hard. But the balls are so close together, the combo still may be quite manageable. Yeah, we actually wanted to get straight in, right? Right. Well, I mean, I don't know why he seemed or, like he hit or, it really hard, Or like, hard, like touched though. the rail. Yeah, yeah. yeah like overhit him right. by a, month, a long stretch. But I, I would hug the rail there for that angle and send the, the yeah. two ball towards that other corner. Right. I mean, yeah, right. You got to over. You gotta overcut it anyways or either shoot it into the rail and make now it Now you got to control both balls. Right. Well, I think he's got the proper angle. See, if he overcuts it and makes the three, the two ball comes out and the cue ball's automatically going this yeah. way. Yeah. See what I mean? So if he were to just make it, the two ball would kind of float out into the middle of the table where it'd be cuttable. Yeah. But he also has a four rail safety. He can bank the four, two ball around four rails under the nine ten. Yeah. Put a little bit of top on the on the cue ball. I would draw it actually to the middle because. It, the ball is going to end up here, so you don't want so to So you stop. have four there, or you mean, or? I'm saying bank the two ball around four rails. What do you do the, with the cue ball? And you draw the cue ball under the four, like, you know. You yeah, under the four. The yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 
Yeah, so you're putting it in the middle of the top rail, basically. Mm. So you cut the two ball to your left a little bit to draw it over there. And I think that's what he's doing. I think he's just going to play a four rail safety here with the two ball and uh, let it be rail to rail. Yeah, he did with he, he went with with top. No, he drew it. He drew it. Yeah. Yeah, when he, he he drew it over to that spot. He hit the replay button. We'll watch it again. It should be good for. Uh, oh wait, he changed the he changed the recording uh, oh. software. Oh, okay. Oh, we have a replay buffer. Okay, wait. Uh, replay. Boom. Uh, okay. That's weird. Yeah, what it, I don't know what it did. Huh. Okay, well. Yeah, see, it couldn't go back far enough is what happened. Okay. Uh, got away with got that away one. With it. He yeah, he got away with that one. He didn't want to hit it that thin. No, he didn't want to hit it that thin, but he, he, he that was the safety he was looking for. He was just yeah. looking for it behind the 9-10 instead yeah. of the eight. Full ball, uh, uh, Full ball um, hook here, right? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, Tyler has a nice safety. This carries a nice safety. He, he can kick the bottom of the two, kicking it into the uh, side rail above the yeah, side. Yeah, and the and, cue ball and comes down. ball goes into the nine ten, right? Yeah. So he could, you know, if he just hits the two ball nicely and controls the speed, it should be fine. I can't tell how much the eight is in front of the, t the two ball. Where he, does he have to shoot it downward and reverse it, or can he shoot it straight across and put a little spin to catch it? I think out? he needs spin, right? Oh, I know he needs spin. I just don't know how much. I'm saying, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. if he has to make it reverse to hit it, or 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 did he? Oh, he's gonna call it. He's side. gonna jump bank this ball. Wow. Okay. Well, um, he's got to land it dead perfect. And it's just real risky for me. I guess I just don't play good enough to see these kind of shots. I yeah, well, I think it's. Yeah. I think it's. Uh, I mean, I see it, but I don't. I don't see yeah. myself trying this. You know, if he makes it. Oh, that's a good shot, or not? Right, but you're more likely to sell out on that, right? You have to hit it so yeah. perfect. I got a little bit lucky with the with the. With he didn't the, get lucky at all. He separated the nine, the two ball. No, goes I mean that he, that he that he tree topped him. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And the two ball, it's a small pocket from here. If he had a whole cue ball, he'd be able to make it easily. But yeah. uh, being that he's elevated, that makes this shot actually He's going to play tough. safe, I think. Play safe where? I think he's got to shoot it in the side. Really? Yeah, he can't Wait, play Wait, I, I need a different angle. I'm blind. Yeah, I he, need this angle. Yeah, you he think can't. he can shoot this? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he can play safety here. What do you think he plays safe at? Uh, well... You can send the, the the two ball towards that other side of the table, and then it is a tight pocket, isn't it? Yeah, it is a really tight pocket, like this. Right, but I mean, so so he shot it in such a way where, you know, he aimed he aimed it shorty on purpose, maybe he yeah. just called it just in case. Yeah, that's probably what happened. I think that was really tough shot to 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 oh, yeah, bridge sure. over that nine, 100%. and then then the side would one hundred would would be would be a low percentage, ultra low percent. Yeah, uh, Tyler has an easy safe though. Yeah, under the three, right? Under the three. Under the three, bank the two ball toward the in between the six four. Oh, I forgot to mute when sipping the coffee. Sorry, guys. Yeah, he's looking at. Uh, you know, I almost would put more merit on banking the two all the way back down on yeah, the inside and of these balls. Be, make sure that the, that, the, that the two ball lands on the rail. Right, right. I think you have a better chance of hooking them with those balls in the center yeah. of the table than you do that three ball. It's just because yeah. you have to play the cue ball a lot slower, which means the two ball is going to be in the vicinity. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, he's well, going to be in the middle that. of the table. Right. Yeah, maybe a little bit more. Right. To, oh, am I solid? Okay. All right, well, I'll take over for you. She's looking for you. You better stop her. <laughs> I told her I'm in the booth. <laughs> I got you. Good. You're on mute. All right, so he's going to go ahead and take his lunch break now, and I'm going to 
continue on. <clears throat> All right, so. change the camera angle back to the normal so okay it's a nice shot on the safety there John for him to come back to change the angle back to the normal but anyway he's got a nice hook and um, I think I don't know I want to say Tyler's gonna have to go two rails around the eight to shoot at this kick and two rails into that pocket line so basically the way he's pointing his cue now that's the way he has to shoot the cue ball two rails towards the two uh, looks a little wide from where he's aiming he must he must be gonna juice it up with some inside then yeah, he did put a lot of inside on there to, you know, make it go a little shorter. And he got a little soft reward out of it, didn't he? A little soft safety out of it, keep John from making it. But John has a return safety. He can kick this ball in between the six, eight, get it down to the end rail, and um, the cue ball will kind of go towards the four. So he just has to control the speed on the two ball good. Hit it just a little hard. He overhit it, and he's gonna sell out a shot. It's a long shot on the two ball, and it's near the rail. So uh, I would say Tyler's gonna have to roll this. I would roll it to uh, stay near the rail. I'm hitting it with the speed. Um, you know, cue ball's gonna bounce some. just easier to hit it hit this ball clean if you just roll it in I think just a nice roll speed try to do something uh, you know, like drawing the ball or you know doing something cute it could be could get touchy you know, this is one of those shots where you don't have a lot of room to just hit it with some draw and you know so you have to kind of drag the cue ball and slow it down so it's a very touchy shot if you're going to be hitting it with pace. And he killed it very nicely. Very nicely. Yeah. See, like I said, I'm an old man, so I just have to roll that ball. No need to try to drag it or do any of that pretty stuff. All right, so it looks like the uh, stop shot's available where you can just shoot the four right in the side after. All right, so now we figured out the camera thing is right in front of my face. I'm just not very computer smart. All right, so we got the different camera angles now. <clears throat> All right, so 
uh, stop shot, maybe draw back an inch or two. Could stop there because the six is available on the side, so it would be all right to stop there. It's a nice stop shot. Well, he let it roll past that spot a little bit, so he has a little bit more angle than he would have had off the stop shot, but this is still manageable. You just roll it in softly. The six is right there by the side. So I wouldn't try to put any speed on it and move the cue ball. You just shoot it in, take your medicine from where it sits. See, he doesn't really like rolling it. But uh, doesn't really have much of a choice doing anything extra. It's just like elevating and just adding a bunch of stuff to the shot, which you don't need. I think just roll this in. Just mind your speed. All short of the eight. And he did. Nice shot. It's almost perfect. All right, so uh, a little inside. He can uh, try to cross a straight in line or fall short of it, and you just go to the side rail and back to the same side he'd be on. So the 8 and 9 would go in the same pocket, 10 in the right pocket. That's what I like. See, crossing the straight in line, you have to get perfect. If you stay, if you fall short of the straight in line, you know you're going to that side rail. I think it's a little bit easier to clock. And either one's okay. And it looks like he got dead straight. So either he's going to go forward or he's going to draw back and shoot it from that area. I think he got, I think he didn't. He didn't cross that straight in line, so he may be going forward around these balls to get the shot that he wants on the nine. And he went around it nicely, but all right. And he looks a little straight on this. I don't know if he has a little angle. Okay, he must have some angle because he's shooting the 10 in the opposite pocket like I said so see when if he didn't have any angle and he was dead straight he'd be looking to draw it and shoot the 10 in the same pocket rather than roll forward and over roll it or whatever so he's got a little soft angle going away from the 10 all right so Tyler extends back out to three after this ball All right, here we go with the next break here. Tyler trying to extend that lead a little more.
beautiful break by Tyler. Uh, got a decent shot on the one. Uh, he's got a good bit of angle, so he has to try to hold or go one rail on the other side of the two, shooting it in the same pocket as the one. So decisions, decisions. Um, to be honest, the angle that he has, it's kind of fooling from the TV angle. It looks, it looks like it's a little bit harder, I think, than it is. No, he's going to the other side of the two, so he does have a lot of angle, like I thought got a good amount of angle so rather than trying to baby your stroke you just go to the other side that way you can hit it with a comfortable speed you know the cue ball is going to go where you're trying to get it to go <clears throat> so inside english one rail under the five two is going in the same pocket as the one and the three is uh hanging in the lower left down here so uh don't see any real problems Okay, so that was an accident. He didn't mean to bump the five. That made it a little bit tougher than he'd like, but it's manageable. He has to, he's right-handed, so he should be able to comfortably reach this from the side of the table. Um, now, does he load it up with outside and go to the third rail over here to the right? Or do you just, uh, you know, a mediocre outside and you go towards the, like the seven and the 10 ball? Yeah, I think I like uh, going all the way around to that third rail, just a little bit more room for air, don't you think? Yeah, yeah, I do, but the cue ball is going a lot faster at a thin cut like this, so he really has to juice it. Uh, I don't know, I just think it's a better chance of getting toward that corner. It just depends on what kind of stroke he puts on it, you know. Sure. I like to take that corner out of play if I could. Wow, caught that right. really thick. Right, he hit it thick because he was making sure right, he got right. into that third rail. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, if he had just pocketed with some high outside and just played and missed the five, I think um, anywhere would have been fine for the three as long as you don't get hooked. Right, right. But he got away with it. John is going to have to jump a ball to continue. Not saying that he's not capable or anything. He's a good job maker. Let's see what he does. Wow, oh, man. So close to getting that, that he two was ball down. Close. I, have to, I have to commend him. Like, he doesn't even, you know, only thing he does right handed now is just break. Like, he even jumps left handed. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's that pretty is, strong. Yeah, no kidding. Take a uh, another look at that one while Tyler sizes this up. Two ball nearly finding. Uh, oh, we got our replays messed up. Sorry about that. Yeah, he tried to, tried to hit a replay on us before. And I got didn't, you. Didn't work correctly, and he said, "Oh, what happened?" <laughs> Stop touching stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get it figured out here, no problem. But, uh, but yeah, man, uh, that two ball was uh, all over the pocket. Just didn't drop. He does have it in the side right now. He's got a natural angle, or he could try to shoot it down into the three. You know, he can use the three ball as a gate and make it in the corner. But I like it in the side. I mean. It's right there. It's close to it. It's natural angle going to the three. Um, yeah, I don't see any issues, but I think shooting it into that crevice is a little bit harder than shooting it into the side. Side pocket, that's the shot. That way you don't move the three. You don't have to control both balls, you know. Take the five out of play, which you would be putting it in play if you shoot the two up in the corner. So a lot of moving parts, unless you just shoot it inside, the then there's no moving parts. It's just a two inside. Sure. All right. See, now he had to control the five yeah. and the three, and it did not work out. And, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, ball I, definitely yeah, has seven's it. in the way. I mean, I know the man's a great shot maker, and he's you know he's good, you know, no doubt about that. But uh, I think he definitely makes it hard on himself sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. just decision wise. Right, he just makes it hard on himself sometimes. I don't know. He 
He's looking like he wants to bank this maybe to the bottom rail and try to use the five ball. Seems kind of touchy on the speed that way. Well, if he's gonna go, if he's gonna bank it to the bottom rail, I don't use the five. I just go right back up the middle in between the five seven and create that distance, right? Because when you try to go around, you're taking speed away from the cue ball. You know, it's, it, the, the rails eat up some of the speed. Okay, so he's just using the seven ball. That was a nice shot. He did well. Yeah, yeah. He did well. Simple safeties do work. Looks like John's going to take a quick break. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to take a break with him. Yeah. We'll be right back.
right, everybody, we are back live. What a match this has turned into. Uh, after the first day, Tyler led by 11, and really led by 15. John made a late uh, resurgence when Tyler was on the hill. Closed out yesterday, down by three. There were a lot of momentum swings in that match. John ahead by two at one point, then down by 10 again, and then, of course, finishing down by three. So it's been a really exciting one to watch. Okay, so uh, Tyler looks like he has another clean out to extend this lead back out to four, I see. Uh, three ball. I'm going one rail back up towards the seven and the nine. I don't want to contact him. I just want an easy shot in the side pocket on the five. Seven sitting in the side. Now, uh, depending on how he feels about it, he could actually nudge the nine and kind of move it away from the pocket off the seven. Ooh, he moved the eight. Yeah, I don't don't think that was intentional, but it won't hurt it's him. It's okay. Any. It's okay. I think he needs to play it. Well, never mind now. He needs to make sure he gets on the eight good. But I was thinking that. He needed to play in such a way where he could contact the nine and kind of move it out. Like, you know what I mean? Cut the yeah, seven yeah. ball in and, and run into the nine, get it off of that right. point. And take a look at our uh, overhead the here. basically sitting in the pocket. So even if the cue ball drew out a little bit, sure, you know, he'd be fine as long as he didn't get hooked. You know, don't over. I wouldn't even overthink it. I just want to nudge the nine and just move it away from the point. Sure, yeah. You know, so... The way this looks, I would go forward with the cue ball here, hit the rail, and, and put some inside on it and, and get above it where I'm kind of going into the nine a little fuller. And he did. And that's perfect. Now you just cut the seven in and clip the nine and draw outward toward the middle of the table where, this, where the you know eight's easy enough and the nine's away from the rail. So are you, uh, you like hitting the nine with your cue ball or shooting the seven into it? No, no, I, I, I don't think you can shoot the seven into it. It's too deep in the pocket. Too I think you have out. to go into the uh, nine with the cue ball. Just softly, you know, don't overthink it. You're just trying to move it away from the rail. Sure. Just want it away from that point. He's trying to figure out a way to not move it, and I don't think, you know, I don't think that's a good idea. I think you just need to move it and make it easy. Yeah, yeah. And got the perfect angle to do so. You just cut the seven draw into the nine and we'll come back out to the middle of the table here oh no that yeah. nine must go in the side comfortably yeah yeah he liked to say he definitely took a look at it i don't know it's uh, looking at the overhead here you know it's it's tight real close to the point he needs to get close to it so he's gonna draw this with low left and come around right below the nine and try to settle under it is what i would do i mean he might be going around the 10 here he's using high ball He's going around the 10. What? Uh, he likes this ball for some reason a lot, a lot more than we do. <laughs> what? From here? He's just slicing it in, I guess. Like, if I'm shooting it like that, I'm making sure my cue ball is getting to the third rail where I can shoot sure. it in the corner if I don't like the side. I mean, sure. now he's committed to the side. Yeah. Better make it. That's all I can say. <laughs> Better make it. I mean, looking looking through the glass, it looks a little easier than it does on the screen, to be honest. It looks like it's further away from the rail than it looks like on the screen. Oh, thought about it for a second. But he thinned it in there. Good yeah. shot, Tyler. Yeah, I definitely would have moved it, me personally, but, you know, I don't like you know, shooting in little tiny pockets. I'm, you know, I'm not that accurate anymore. I mean, not, no, I never I'm was. I'm not in my 20s anymore. I'm not even in my 30s anymore. You know, I'm just, you know so. In any I'm case. Super accurate. It's a little, little tough if I don't have to be. Tyler takes a 56-52 lead, extended by four. Right, and uh, 19 games away. Yeah. Yeah, on the day, uh, just ahead by one. Still been really back and forth. John uh, got it tied up. 
I don't. He wasn't ever ahead, right? Just got it tied, and then Tyler's ever pulled ahead. No, John got ahead. Oh, did he? He okay. got ahead yeah. on the second day. He got it up to thirty-two to twenty. Well, yeah, yeah. Second day, I meant uh, today. They tied at fifty-two. No, um, he didn't take the lead. I don't think today. Yeah. But yeah, man, kind of just been trading racks back and forth. This is really kind of the first time that uh, the lead has been extended by four, I believe. Well, what happens is when right when you plan good, and John was playing very well to catch all the way up. You know, you start taking a few more risks, trying to overpower your opponent sure. rather than just taking the correct shot to keep control of the table. And I mean, it's 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 tempting, right? You know, some like for instance, you know, that jump shot or whatever. You know, he could have made sure he hit it thick, but yeah. he tried to cut it in, right? And right. so he left a sellout shot. If he hits it thick, now maybe he gets separation. Now maybe Tyler has a tough shot to, you know, what I'm saying, at sure. least start the rack. You know, when a guy's right behind the ball with almost ball in hand shape, you know, it's it's tough to, you know, keep him from running out. Yeah. Now, Tyler really hit that break hard. And he did. I one, heard that one. One of the things I've noticed, even uh, with John, it seems like the harder they hit it, uh, they may still make the balls, but it seems like the balls don't – the one ball doesn't cooperate. You start to get something tied up. Right. When they hit it, with just kind of a smooth pop stroke. It right. seems to be the best result. Right. You're You're correct. When you overpower it, you, they do tend to kiss each other and, you know, tie up. You're right. So he's got a nice safety here. He can uh, shoot the one into the rail and below the four, keeping it near the rail there, and swing his cue ball three rails below the ten, two, six. So one, two rails short right here on the inside and then hit the long third rail and down to the bottom. So four rails all together if he makes it to the bottom rail. But he needs to make sure that he's uh, using that four ball. He needs the one to contact the four to keep it hidden. Nope, he missed it, but he got the hook, though. No, he didn't. See, now, you see, like, now if, if he could have hit the four, then it would have been a hook. Right, right. So he missed the four. But yeah. I, I can't tell whether John can – yeah, he can make it. He yeah, can make it. He, he, doesn't have good, he doesn't have anything good, though. Yes, yeah, so even if you get this ball down, you've got nothing on the two. Right, you have to get way over to this rail to make it. So he has to, like, elevate and draw this ball. And I think that's what he's going to do. That's why he took off his glove. He's going to shoot this one with the right hand because he has more of a uh, power stroke with the right hand, being that he's naturally right-handed, right? Yeah, yeah. So, oh, his brakes right-handed? Yep, he's bridge right-handed for this shot because he needs that extra power to draw it over there. And the seven should help if he hits it clean, right? Yeah, help create the angle, but uh, overcut the ball quite a bit. Yeah. Easy to do when you're jacked up that much. Yeah, but, I mean, he kind of got away with it, though. Yeah. Uh, the one doesn't go clean. Uh, there is a carom available in the seven where you can kind of – uh, cut the one towards the side and carry the seven in. But uh, if you don't make it, he's losing control of the table where John actually has a good look. Right. So he has to make a decision on whether he wants to take a chance or keep control of the table here. Yeah. Sizing up the carom now. Well, it's certainly doable. It's certainly makeable. It's not, I'm not going to say it's not a tough shot, but it's not a, uh, it's not a terrible shot. You know, if you're confident, you can make this question is controlling the one you have that's, to that's what it. i was just about to ask you kind of have to play a little bit of pace to get up back off that rail right well not really not really because if you carry on the seven and the cue ball is going to go forward mm -hmm. so if you thin the one it'll kind of stay on the rail or where you can make it in the side so i would say hit it a little thinner with like a medium pace and, and you should have a straight in shot on the corner side gotcha He tried to he tried to hit it thick. Yeah, yeah. And and go through it, and he just needed to hit it thin. Or he had a lot of inside on it though, so maybe he had it aimed thin and it went toward the ball, shooting a low deflection. Yeah. Now John is a uh, Derby City Classic Bank champion. You think uh, you think he takes this one on? Well, he might just because the safety is not a hanger. Now he yeah. could actually thin the one ball and get on the other side of the five here. See it? Right, right. And just play a simple safety, and it would be very hard for Tyler to hit it. Two balls in the way, there's balls in, you know, there's stuff in the game. Yeah. Uh, I think the issue with that is uh, even with ball in hand, then what do you do, you know? 
Yeah, well, but he'll have he'll have a bank. He'll be able to shoot the two six combo. I mean, and Tyler's going to kick it to one. He may hit right. something to right. open it. You know. Yeah. Good point. So banking yeah. at it, he would actually have to hit it with enough speed to come all the way back down the table, two rails, and it's available. It is available. But I think he has a safety available as well. Okay, he shot at it, double, double kissed, kissed it. Yep. So you see, you see what's happening. Oh no! Wow, no. what a roll there! No. Wow, wow. Well, yeah, it takes those sometimes. It does. It does. Got a got it, a uh, lucky safety there. You called it earlier. You mentioned uh, it just kind of seemed like John's eager to make something happen today. You know, uh, right? Maybe he's more. Not, right. He's willing to take more chances and not just play the game correctly and keep control of the table. Right. And that's what I'm talking about, you know, like, yeah. Like, you think about it, if you don't get lucky right there, now Tyler has another open opportunity to extend that lead, making him more comfortable and you more uncomfortable, sure. you know. So, I just think uh, John needs to uh, get out of his mind as far as catching up and just play the game. And Tyler needs to play, I think, more simple, and he will play better. I just think uh, I think he plays a great game. He's a great shot maker, and he just uh, he just wants to move the cue ball just a little bit too much. He's doing extra where he doesn't have to, and he's putting himself in bad positions a couple of times because of it. In my opinion, I think that's what's happening. So he just yeah. needs to be a little bit more simple with the cue ball, and 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 John needs to be more patient. That's my diagnosis. Yeah, I, I agree completely with you. All right, so a nice hit. Got a little bit of separation, not much. Yeah. John's going to have a shot. Um, <clears throat> really nothing. Uh, I mean, you know, get the one ball down here, follow down for the two. Um, it's an out you'd expect him to make, but it's certainly not the most straightforward one he's had in this match. The three, seven combo, five, you've got to shoot up table. Yeah, he's going to actually let his stroke out. He's going to draw into the rail here and back out to the other side of the table. So he's drawing to his, uh, to, to the right, if you look at the screen. Yeah, good stroke there. He hit it with a great stroke. Maybe too good of a stroke. Yeah. A little hard to get on the three from here, elevated, and you're on the rail. So uh, he may... He's going to have to uh, spike it in with a, a t inside two rails. And, you know what I'm saying, just come inside the six mm -hmm. and get back over there. It's the only way. I don't think he'll elevate and draw this. He's going to have to load it up with inside. Yeah, he wouldn't mind, I don't think, being center table uh, from the combo. Guarantees shape on the three ball afterwards, right? Uh, right. If you get straight in on that ball, you get those funny rolls where the right. three goes yeah, to the bottom exactly. rail. Or yeah, right here. He can actually not worry about it. All he has to do is pocket the combo. He's guaranteed shape. You're right. But I would have liked to have gone a little bit further. This is more angled than I like. Sure. Because the cue ball is going to go faster. You know, you have to, like, hit it with a little English. So, yeah. Well, I think he's got to play to overcut this and hit it with a little bit of low outside to avoid the 10. Because he's overcutting it, so the cue ball is going to fall if he hits it with a high outside ball. I think it's going to fall down some since you're overcutting it, unless he hits it easy. Okay, he hit it, he hit it with the outside. Maybe a little nice too strong. A little bit too much speed. He's going to be shooting this one right-handed. Immediately goes for the extension. Okay, so I guess he's going to shoot it left-handed then. 100% <laughs> I'm going to change to right hand. Right here. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. You, you know you've got it. Yeah, like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Okay, so he heard me. He heard me. <laughs> he heard me thinking about it. 100% you're changing to the right hand here. What the hell? He's got these headphones in. We might have to check what uh, what Josh and John got going on here. Yeah, I'm, I'm guaranteeing <laughs> you that John's not listening to my commentary. <laughs> All right, so a little bit of a problem there. It looks like the five barely passes the six. Like, it looks tight. How tight is it? You're looking down the pipe. Can you look yeah. down the pipe and see it through the glass? Oh, well, he laid down on it. Now yeah, you yeah. can't see it. When he gets up, you should be able to see it, though. It 
it's uh, it looks like the five barely passes the six. Yeah, it does. I mean, the six definitely has a piece of the pocket, but he he can make the five. Yeah. So you got dead straight. Yeah. This is can, not can we change the here. angle to see how straight he's gotten? Because if he can hit the bottom rail, he can two rail it out of there. Yeah, let's look and at he the doesn't overhead look here. that concerned. I think he can cheat it and get the two rail. Where's the overhead? On this side here. Yeah, it's... Um, no, it's pretty straight. It is. He I may have still. to yank this ball and try to get to the cross side bank. He is hitting with a high ball, though. Just enough angle. You may have it in the other corner pocket. On top side of the side. Pocket. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Unforced air there. Oh, oh, oh. Man. Yeah, those are the kinds of things that uh, that hurt him so much on day one. Just little bitty mistakes here and there, and Tyler was able to create such so much space. Well, he made a nice out to uh, basically finish that rack, and you know he got, you know, he got bad on that four ball where he couldn't get to the five. He he needed a little bit of angle either way, and he would have got to the five, but he couldn't, didn't quite have it. Yeah. All right, so Tyler's going to take this game and extend out to five now. He's just got an easy roll on the six to get to the ten. After this 10 ball, it'll be 57 52. Tyler will be 18 games away from the night after these two balls. Fifty-seven, fifty-two. Tyler Steyer leading over John Mora. We're racing to 75 tonight. We'll finish it tonight. Somebody will be the winner. He racks up the balls. Check out a couple, a couple of our promotional sponsors. Uh, coming up here soon at the Derby City Classic, Omega Billiards has the D-Gen Dungeon. First year for setting that up. Got... Uh, a lot of good action matches they're they're working on. There's in addition to the uh, traditional uh, pool action TV room, also Ray Hansen doing a great job over there with a lot of great matches. Have our sponsors: Q Tech, Diamond Billiards, Michelle Griffin, local realtor, Jam Up Apparel, and. Johnny Brunk Print Services. Definitely check them out, as well as Burning Barrel. Big part of making this event happen, show them some love. We are breaking off in rack 110 with Tyler Steyer. Didn't quite hit that one as square. He ended up with a decent cut on the one. He can cut this ball in and go two rails maybe in between the 10-9. Okay, that's where he's pointing at. He has to be careful with that because that angle is is uh, introducing the pocket, right? Yeah. Going in between those balls is introducing the pocket. And if you try to go wide, then you're going into the 10, right? I, you know, if I'm him, I almost shoot this, but just top and come on the open side. Like, yeah, just come yeah. right down in between the 7-10. Because you don't have to spin this in. You can just cut it in with top. Yeah, that's kind of what I was looking at. Maybe trying to pick the, yeah, the center diamond center on the lower ball. Center ball, yeah. you know what I mean? To yeah. get on the two here and just finesse it in rather than trying to spin it. I, I, don't, I don't think spinning it is going to bring you in the traffic and introduce that corner pocket. So, uh I mean, I'm not saying he can't hit it good. I'm just saying, sure. you know, it adds things to the shot. See that? Just like you talked about. It went into the 10. If you go yeah. long, 
That's why that's why you don't want to go into balls. But he does have a nice amount of balls to play safety here. Like he can, you know, bank the two straight back up the table, get behind the nine, ten, three, and that's a pretty big wall of stuff yeah. to get behind. He could actually thin the two and go behind the five and use the ten three. He's got a couple of safeties here that he could play easily with those balls sitting there. So you think it may be a matter of uh you know where we are in this match and maybe he's just more comfortable with that type of shot spinning it no okay i just i just think that I, i'm thinking of the I, way i that, won't say it the way i'm really thinking it because sure. i don't want anybody to take it as an insult sure but i think sometimes when you're used to making balls a certain way you don't think of them the other way let's just that's, that's just the better. best way i can say yeah, yeah, it no, I understand. sounding you know yeah. arrogant or insulting but um that, right, and i think that's more of what I'm getting at, you know, especially players like myself who don't play as much as guys like you and Tyler. You know, we see certain shots certain ways and get used to, to hit them that way. Now, see, he's about to go backwards here. He's about to try to use the two ball to hide the balls instead of using the cue ball, you know, getting the cue ball over under those balls. Right, Which, right. you know, he has a much better chance of controlling the cue ball exactly where he wants it than to cut the two ball into the exact spot that he wants oh, it. That makes you know a lot I mean? of sense, yeah. So he's got a much better chance of using the cue ball to play safe under those balls rather than the two. So he looks like he's taking the shot that I showed second where you're going behind the five and you just cut the two a little bit using the 310 for cover. All right. Yeah. Those shot. simple safeties, they mean a lot. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. Like that you're not going to keep the guy from hitting the ball, but you will make him sell out. Yeah. You know, or yeah. give you a better chance to play safety. And it's really just about keeping control of the table. If you frustrate your opponent, he'll eventually give up on the accuracy. Sure. <clears throat> John's called this in the corner pocket he's next to. I, I would think that he'd jump this. You know, he's only got a half of the three to clear, and it's virtually straight after that. I would jump it if I'm John. He's going to probably kick it two rails. That way he can try to get out of there. Get some separation, but it did not work. It did what, jack him up over the nine, though. I was about to say, what did help is that nine ball coming into play, right? He's elevated. So Tyler, even if he could make it, won't be able to do much with the cue ball at all. Um, and I also think that if he would have played behind the five instead of just the 310, maybe it's a little harder to do what he just did, right? Sure. Because he kind of went in front of the five, you know, and if if you get behind the five, then that kick's not even available. Yeah. Know, right? Yeah. Ooh, this is touchy. This is very, 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 very touchy. Ah, good thing they got a clear bridge. <laughs> yeah. Good, good equipment. You can at least see through the bridge there. <laughs> Uh-oh, Tyler, not going to like this one. No. All right, yeah, so. I wish I could say I provided that equipment. I believe that's something Tyler brought. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a, a, a very nice uh, bridge. Clear yeah. bridge is like one of the best ones. Yeah. So yeah. John's going to go ahead and shoot this. Uh, and it's a tough shot. Um, and the five's kind of in the way to get out in the middle where you can cut, shoot the three in the pocket it sits. So he's going to have to either play it with inside or just let it hit the five and hope he gets a shot. So. And at this stage of the game, you want to pocket this ball. So, you know, you don't want to miss this ball. You want to make it. Yeah, definitely taking his time on this. Wants to make sure he's 100% confident. Overcut, I think. Oh, it did drop. I thought it was going to catch the outside of the pocket. No, he hit it. He hit it pretty decent, especially for a clean table. That's going to take that. All right. So, uh, looks like he can maybe go around the ten, where he's got the five in the side, or either go all the way. See, I don't like going around towards the nine because you know you're taking a chance of getting hooked. 
So if you can just go under the 10, you can shoot the five in the same pocket or either in the side if he, if he wants to hit it that soft. Oh, he's, is he drawing this ball? No, he's going forward. He's going around the 10. Okay. Not, uh, not fully convinced himself what he wants to do here. I don't think he's like. convinced that he passes the 10, but I think he does pass the 10 pretty easily with a high ball. Oh, he's drawing it, so he doesn't think he's passing the 10. So he's going to go on the outside of the 10, and that means he's going toward the five, two rails. Oh, he's okay, able no, to. he drew it. He stayed away from it completely. Yeah. And he's got a tough shot on the five here. This is no hanger. Uh, actually, for... For a lefty, it'd be more make more sense to cut the five over there because he can reach mm. it. Yeah. You know. And the cue ball's going toward the six, three rails, right? You go one, two, three rails and right, around right. the six. So, yeah, it makes more sense to cut it in this pocket for him. I wouldn't try to hold this. You just let it, let it go all the way around. Don't try to hold it. Don't spin it. Just top English, go all the way around the six. That's how you do it. Oh, just hangs the ball. Yeah. Yeah, just kind of uh, seems like every rack there's one little thing that pops up, preventing John from uh, really getting ahead in this match. Well, he, for some reason he changed right there about going around the ten, and I don't think he thought that he, even if he didn't think he could not, if he if he thought he was going to nick it on the way in, what would have happened exactly, right? cue ball would have thinned the 10 it would have pushed towards the pocket it still would have hit the rail and come up on the five right right you see so it was still the correct shot even yeah if even if you couldn't pass it just trying to be perfect instead of uh right the yeah. other way it just kind of made it hard you know what i mean you could have hooked yourself yeah. you know you could clip the 10 on the way in go in the pocket who knows just yeah. drawing across the top of it you know yeah yeah totally makes total sense so I'm sure the next time you commentate, well, you'll be using that moving parts theory. He's <laughs> yeah, adding yeah. a lot of moving parts going on Absolutely. here. Absolutely. Got to control all these balls. So, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like the best pool is played very simply, unless they're just an amazing shot maker. Sure. The best pool is played very simply. It looks almost boring, like it's supposed to happen. Yeah, you yeah. Know? It's uh, Buddy Hall that always said, don't play shape when you already have it. Right. I will never agree with that. <laughs> Ever agree with that. Maybe I'm just too old and that's like a new thing. I just, I will never agree with picking the ball up. Yeah. I mean, there would have to be something vis like a piece of chalk on the ball that you could visibly see is going to affect the way it rolls. Right. You know, make you the ball just, hop or something. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like trying to pick a hair off the ball, that's not going to affect the way it rolls, dude. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. Oh, oh wow. baby. That was a big overcut there. Yeah. I'm going to dress up perfectly on his side. Yeah. Now, John has a little bit of work to do here because look at the way the six is laying. He's going to have to go two rails above the seven, so a high inside ball here. See it? He's yep. going to have to go high inside and hit right before the ten and go up above the seven. The inside will make it check up short. Yep. So... High inside, right in between the nine, ten, above the seven. Beautiful. Yeah, right. great position now. Yeah, he's, he's he's great now. All right, so I don't know if I'm John to take out some of these moving parts. I won't play the angle to go two rails. I will try to get straight on the eight where I can get straight on the nine and keep that cue ball from moving too much. Yeah. So I'm going to pop the seven in and get out the middle where I can get a good angle on the eight to just get straight in on the nine rather than trying to go two or three rails. And it looks like he's going to go two or three. He's going to go at least two rails now. So I'm expecting he'll play the nine in the uh, – yeah, he'll play the nine in the lower right pocket if you're looking at the screen. That way you're just going uh, to the second rail and just getting off the rail here. So just to the left. 
and get to that rail and get off of it where you don't, where you're not on the rail. Just like that. See, there's, there's those moving parts. Now, imagine if he'd have rolled another two inches, it'd been very hard to get on the 10 from here. Sure. Yeah. All these moving parts. <laughs> All right, so now John is back within four after this 10 ball. Don't expect he'll miss this one. I think I'd be a good pool coach. I agree. I think yeah. that I could, you know, I can't say that I'm a, you know, I wouldn't say that I'm a great player or anything, but I think that I could, you know, teach somebody how I think and make them play better. Yeah, yeah. Like a good shot sure. maker if I just tell them, okay, now you need to get over here so this is not hard. And then make sure you get right here so you're home free from there. Sure, yeah. I'd, I'd make it easy. Hey, look, you heard it here, folks. First time. I know some of you that play here in Louisville. You need some help. Get down here and see Josh Roberts. He's going to get you straightened out. For a nice fee. Just a small fee, just you know. Just a small fee. Yeah. Well worth it. I don't know. I have a weird way of teaching. I'm not uh, <laughs> super methodical. Like I, I, I teach, I teach how to embrace the feel of it, right? Because once you get your aiming point and everything, then it comes down to your speed and spin, which is more feel than anything. It's hard sure. to hit it exactly where you want it. Yeah, yeah. You have to feel it. Hard to quantify. Right. And you have a lot of guys that try to break it down into like a math problem. Right. And it's not about that. It's the feel of it. Right? Sure. Yeah. So no uh, no CTE for you? No. Definitely not. <laughs> definitely not. Not saying it doesn't work. You know, I've heard guys say that they love it. Sure. But I don't know. I, I can't say that I've ever seen anyone that uses – the system that has actually played better than they were playing before. The only one I know that played good on the system for sure is Landon Shefford, Stan yeah. Shefford's son. Yeah. That kid was amazing. I mean, you know, who knows? He, he might have been on the Moscone Cup team with those guys if he decided he wanted to play. That dude was, sure. that was a bad dude. I'm in there at 25, 28 playing, and the mm -hmm. kid's running out with me, you know, like yeah. 12, 11, you know. Yeah, I remember him uh, winning a big set against Earl on a 10-foot table. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Landon Shuffett was an amazing player, and it sucked that, you know, he got pushed so hard as a kid that it kind of pushed him away from it sure. instead of towards it, right? He didn't love it because he had to do it. Sure, sure. You know, and I love it because, you know, I wanted to do it. Big yeah, difference. yeah. You know what I mean? People ask me all the time, you know, like, yeah, you know, how do you, you know, stay interested and all that? And then I just tell them straight up because I still love to play. Yeah. You know, I can get in it for hours and just practice on my own. I still love to play and learn. Yeah. So anyway, back to the game. John's got a nice easy out here, nothing touching. So one rail to the four to get right out in the middle of the table. Get over the nine ball. Yeah, he definitely went a little too far there, and I don't understand why. If falling short was way better than going too far because right, you could right. go around the balls. Yep. You know, but I think he's not elevated where he should be able to at least go back and forth with the cue ball here. So back and forth in between the nine ten. Yep. I mean, he could try to get above it, but it looks like the nine is very close to the ball where it, you know stroking it could be an issue. So definitely don't want to baby this ball either. So two rails. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think especially at the speed of the table here this week, I have a hard time holding this one. Yeah. And he doesn't want to fall short. Like I'd almost go two rails and make sure I'm hitting the third rail and coming off because if you fall short out here, now you got to come around two rails to get on the six in the side. Right. So I'm going to make sure I get it where I can draw it or at least go one rail.
Okay, he, he went above the nine. I like that. Closed the distance a little bit. That little bit of distance right there makes all the difference. So now he can just draw it straight back. Looks like he's pretty straight, so he can just draw it back under the six and play it in the side pocket or corner, whichever one looks better after the positioning. stroke got directly under the six uh, I think he'll shoot it in the side just to get the cue ball off the rail just kind of float it in there and get off the rail a few inches and that'll give him an easy seven ball no need to shoot it in the corner just roll it in the side just let it roll away from the rail a little bit just like that all right, now you draw two rails out of there and you got the nine in the side. And it'd be all right if you fall short because you can always go up the table. From where the 10 is, you can always hit the top rail and come back. So just make sure you contact the two rails. That's what I like. Backing out two rails. Just like that. Beautiful. All right. So he's straight enough where he can just draw this backward. You can just draw this backward and shoot the 10 in the left lower corner. Yeah. Good draw stroke, and he's got it back within three after this 10 ball. Alrighty, 54 to 57, John Mora trailing by three. After and taking a little break here, and yep. we'll be right back with you.
All right, folks, sorry about that. Uh, back in the booth here with you. John Mora back on the run. 54 to 57, he trails. Got a message over the break. We were uh, mentioning, mentioning CTE. We have the uh, creator himself, Stan Shuffett, tuning in and uh, wanted to let us know Tyler has been uh, implementing CTE. Definitely a system that's helped a lot of people over the years. Anytime you have something like that in pool, of course, there's uh, railbirds have their arguments about what does and doesn't work, ultimately. Different strokes for different folks, but uh, glad to see you tuning in, Stan. Meanwhile, here in this, uh, this game, John's trying to get settled in here. Kind of get the feeling that if he can just keep this match close, he had a couple opportunities over the last uh, last uh, yesterday in particular. Of course, uh, the first day he's trailing the entire match, but uh, even yesterday when when Tyler pulled ahead for the second time by ten, John was able to close it down to three at the end of the day. So you know he's got to be feeling better coming into the start of today. Trailing by three here now, so still even on the day. I had a prediction early in the match that if they can keep it close like this, if Tyler can maintain his uh, you know, one to three game lead, it'll stay close. But if John's able to get it even and pull ahead, I just have a feeling that it's going to be tough on Tyler to come back from that today. Definitely not a guarantee. Tyler is a uh, phenomenal player, obviously. Well accomplished. But uh, I think no matter what happens, we're in for uh, some really awesome pool over the next few hours. We're racing to 75. $80,000 has been posted in the middle. I have seen it with my own eyes. It is here, and somebody's walking away with it.
All right, John Moore cleaning up those last few balls. Cuts the lead down to two, 57 to 55. Tyler leads. See if John can put down a good break here and uh, try to get this back even and then some. I know that's certainly his goal. Interested to see what uh, speed John uses here. We talked a little bit about, about it before. Both players have kind of been uh, variable on how hard they hit these, but it seems like kind of a medium pace is the, is the ticket as far as getting the balls to line up the way you want. That's a good pop on him. But, uh, didn't get a shot on the one though. Yeah, like we talked about, it kind of forces that one ball more, more traffic seems like. And yeah, well, see, here's the thing: when you when you break in ten ball, right, you have to break them dead square from one side to the other, and make, that makes the one come down in the opposite side from yeah. where you're breaking from. So if you go across the rack, or say you you go, you know breaking from the left side and you go across the rack and the cue ball kind of goes to the right. Right. The one ball comes right down the center of the table instead of going over to the pocket, right? Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. So. Probably just a chip off and trying to get behind the four here, you think? Yeah, definitely behind the four and uh, push the one up by the two. I don't think he can really get any speed on it and stay behind the four. I think he has to just control the speed of the cue ball. And he did that very nicely. Yeah. Uh, took away the jump. There is a side rail kick here. Um, a little bit tougher to do it when it's uh, when the V is a lot. Like it's basically so you close to the rail. It's a lot tougher to kick this ball than if the cue ball were say down on the rail near the eight level with it. Yeah. Any so kind of a uh, little harder to judge the V. Yeah. Any kind of spin you put also top bottom uh, seems to amplify. Uh, right. Get a little bend off the rail. Right. And whenever you're whenever you're close to the rail like this and you kick into it, the cue ball comes off a little faster, right? It comes off a whole different way than say you were three or four feet away from the rail and you shot sure. into it. it. Comes off a whole different way than if you're close to it. Yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> and for the record, I'm sorry for any offense that I may have caused on, uh, you know, my comments earlier about the CTE. That wasn't my intention. Oh, no, yeah, I don't. You know, like I said, uh, I mean, we talked a little bit about it. I think. You know, there's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of systems out there, and some of them resonate really well with people. At the end of the day, it's uh, what's ever going to improve your game. And uh, well, I'm just, I'm just saying. I, I even watched a little bit of it. A buddy of mine had uh, tapes of it, and, and uh, it was, it was, it was confusing to me. Sure. sure. So, you know. get a little double hit there, and uh, one ball on the side, but that's not going to work. We're playing call shot. Yeah, but I, I think John's going to give this back. Very hard to play safety here. Like, he could cross this ball and try to go up the table, but where the 10 and the 6 is, they're kind of tough to get behind without swinging the cue ball around, you know, in a pattern coming around. Like, coming straight down the table, it's very hard to get behind something. Sure. And, uh, you know, nothing to really protect the cue ball except for the 4 if you bank it over this away. So, um, yeah, see, he gave it back. Yeah, it's yeah. very hard to play safe from here. It's not an easy safety in this spot. Now, Tyler maybe could cross the two ball, banking it down in between the 10 7 gap yeah, and, yeah. and bring the cue ball over behind the four, one rail behind the four. Yeah, I it think look, I like it that. It looks like the two is just to the right of straight in, which means he can cross it with a touch of inside English. Uh, hitting it accurately from this far is another story, but the shot is there. You sure. can definitely bank it up the table cross it and, and get over towards that corner pocket where the four is. I mean, really, as long as the speed is right, the only thing that could go wrong is a kiss, which would ruin everything. But if you get the two ball to that bottom rail, you know, the most you could sell out would be maybe a carom on the three. Nothing's really going to bank easily. Well, it depends on how hard he hits the two, right? He has to get the two ball speed perfect. If he's off the rail any, he, John may be able to have a shot on the three combo or a carom. 
Right, right. So that's the only problem with that. But the other thing is, it's really not really a lot of options for safety. You know, he could maybe cross the two and put the cue ball on the same side and try to use the nine ball. But if you don't get behind the nine, you're selling out. Yeah, yeah. So it's just a hard safety for me. It's not 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 easy at all. I don't know what he called. Did he call the corner by the three or did he call it over here by the four? He called it by the four. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So he's going to try to go back toward the nine, put the cue ball basically back where it is. Would be would be what I would think if he's going to bank it at the four. I'd like to put them both on the same side where you have a ball to get behind. Oh, he he tried to shoot it in the corner. Yeah, play three rails. Yeah. He tried to shoot it in that corner. I didn't even realize that it went. Why didn't I think of that as an option? <laughs> <laughs> I I didn't see it either. I almost want to rewind it to see if it went. How did I not see that? We might be able to get a view of that. Let's see if we got our replays uh, straightened out here yet. Uh, this was uh, shot previous. Okay, so it does look like it goes, but the eight is in the game. Yeah. The eight was in the game. Yeah. It, it was. It was very close. You know, you could shoot it in with like a ball and hand stroke, but it was very hard shot from where he was <clears throat> all right so john's going two rails with the z shape behind the six right in between the six nine and dropping down on the three ball you'd like to keep a little angle to go back out to the middle of the table off the three here okay well he banked it it looked to yeah. me like he could have easily cut that in yeah I'm wrong. me too I, I thought the same thing i was a little bit surprised by that and Okay. Well, all right. Well, in any case, he made it. He'll have to thin the three, leave it on the bottom rail, and just nudge it, leave it, you know, probably somewhere around the middle, and just uh, go back up the table toward the eight. Yeah. Using those three balls as blockers is what I like. He could actually uh, bank it toward the seven and let the cue ball float over to the right rail behind the six. He could do that as well, but I like the thinning shot because it keeps it on the rail and the cue ball immediately separates and you have balls right in the way as soon as you pass them. Sure. So this going this way, you kind of have to create the safety a little bit, but he's done it nicely. Got behind the six. Good shot. He's left taller, a simple kick, though. He can looks like he can just uh, shoot right past the 10 with some uh, right spin and clip the three and maybe stay under the 710. He has to be careful of the scratch here. If he hits it too thin, he will scratch in the lower right. Yeah, I think uh, maybe even choosing a target of shooting the three towards the center diamond here, right? And uh, kind of slowing, use thicker hit to slow down the cue ball and, right. and bank the three up table. Right. Well, I can't tell how much the 10 in the way. Like, look, yeah, he's elevating yeah. like he has to mass eight a little bit to even get a good hit on it. Sure. So if, if that's the case, if he's creating that much angle, he may not get behind the seven. It may kind of go into the right, seven if right. he's using, you know what I mean? Like if he can't yeah. use the natural kick angle. So now he's looking at two rails and uh, this way it doesn't create separation. I don't like it this way. If I'm gonna kick at two rails, uh, well actually, let's see here. Can we get that full screen again? Let's see here. Yeah, this is this is just definitely hard. I think I would elevate and do what he was about to do is his best option, trying to clip the three up the table and get it on the rail, get the separation. Looks like he could manage the hit to me. Two rail kick, it's not that it's harder, it's just that if you look at the two rail angle, there's nothing for him to get behind, right? There's only two balls up the table. Sure. So it's not much of a safety to be had by going this way is what I, what I meant when I said it's harder. Yeah, you're not getting the separation. Well, look at that. He got, well, he a got little bit funny here, isn't it? <clears throat> John may be forced to uh, play safe himself and try to go under the eight, cut the three uh, upwards towards the side and just float under the eight ball. Kind of like a one pocket shot. Just, you know. 
I don't think the combo is right. Q balls going down in the traffic. You don't want to mess with that. I don't think yeah. offensive is the answer here. I think he's got to go behind the eight. Yes, definitely a, a, a big ball just to go behind the eight. Would you agree, or you think he could do yeah, something yeah. else? I, I think mean, the only thing that's funny, if you take a look at the overhead, is oh, just the no. angle for getting here. Did no, he call the eight he ball? he called the carom. Okay. I think he's okay. shooting the carom where he's just going to, like, shoot, go in the bottom of the three and try to make the eight with the cue ball. <sighs> the only problem with that is you don't keep control of the table. Yeah. And, and, and where he's bridged that out of that pocket is just, it's just hard to, like, hit it good if he had a little room out of the pocket i could see him doing that but like frozen the rail this is just tough see what i mean like look, yeah. at the, look at the chance he took right there and he could have easily just got behind the eight controlled the table and get a sellout shot right 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 you know he's left some work for tyler here at least um i mean you know, why do the work to get it back within two and then give away control right. of the table here? Right. You got you to gotta stay on them. Got to stay on them. All right, so uh, Tyler has a few options, but I like the simple one where you just thin the three ball, get it off the rail a little, and you float down behind the nine. And you put the nine in between the three and the cue ball and uh, make him jump at it and give me a better shot at it. That's what I like. <clears throat> now there's a maybe a soft issue with that a little bit hard to get past the point no it's not it's I'm looking through the glass it looks like it's pretty easy to get past the point uh, just has to control the speed he could two rail it down below the balls but he has to hit that thick to do that i don't i don't really like that i think uh, you just thin it keep it simple Oh, he shot at it. Okay. All right, he shot at it, and and he didn't leave anything. I mean, he left John rail to rail. He could see the three ball with a snow hanger. Now, John could possibly get behind the nine here, banking the three toward the six ball, soft bank, and just try to float up on the nine. I don't like thinning it and going up the table because you could, you know, from this, you, from this angle, you could definitely hit it too thick and push the three ball out where you leave a shot. I like just keep it in nice and simple. And even if you don't get the hook, you still got a really tough shot to shoot, you know. Beautiful, got behind the nine, executed, perfect. That's how you keep control of the table. That's what you want. That's, that's exactly what you want, beautiful. Okay, so now, uh, you know, can he see through that gap? Let's let's change the camera angle here. Get camera four. Oh, yeah. I guess he can see through the gap, the seven ten, and kick at the three. I thought he had to go like around the six and like zigzag it or do a two rail or something. But he got a perfect little window right in there to hit it. <clears throat> Oh, look at this. He hit it just perfect to get under the seven. The eight caught the three ball, slowing it down. And he got a safety out of it. Uh, good shot, Tyler. Played, played that one very nicely. I mean, I think he had to get a little bit of a luck, but he hit it just, just the right way where that gave him the best chances to, you know, get a leave if there was one. And I think John can uh, spin around this and just catch the three, about a half a ball, lay on the rail and at least defend himself. He may not be able to hook him. Oh yeah, he did. Look at this speed on this guy. Wow, great speed by John. And Tyler will be kicking this ball up the table and trying to get under the eight here. Did he call the side? I think he did call the side pocket. It's definitely a safety here. You can kick this three ball toward the side or just up the table. And the cue ball should come off the three and go back to the rail and toward the eight. <clears throat> so in order to kick it past the side, it's going to hit really thin. It, he probably wouldn't hook him with the eight. It's very hard to, cue ball's going to be going a lot faster if he kicks it that thin. 
So I would say before the side in order to get the hook. He has to hit it a little thicker and slow the cue ball down to get behind the eight. All right, so he accidentally made a ball. And uh, uh, I think John will go ahead and put the three on the other side of the seven using the, te the, the, ten, the 10 and the seven as blockers. So if you're looking at the screen, he's gonna uh, bank it towards the left side pocket and just lay the cue ball down on the rail using the seven ten. That's what I like. Oh, wait a minute, he's examining the cut. Wow. Okay, well that's very optimistic from the rail here. Um, if if he likes it, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. He's he's very close in the score. It's only a two game difference. I like keep control of the table. I think that's the best thing to do here. Just play the safety and bank it up the table. Exactly. Beautiful safety. And with the 710 right there, it's a pretty big wall once he got it past the seven. And Tyler will have to perform the same kind of shot he just did, where he's kicking the three past the side towards the eight and trying to get under the seven. So he'll be trying to kick below it just a little bit, where his cue ball hits it and goes under the seven and the 10. That's what he wants. So a little bit of speed, medium speed. Oh, he hit it dead thick. He must have called it because he's walking towards it and John didn't jump up. I didn't see him call it, but I wasn't paying attention. I was more so just commentating right there. So, so he's shooting a kick, calling it in the corner. And uh, he has the nine there that might help with the cover. Um, but if he gets it going anywhere near the corner, cue ball is kind of going to come to the same side of the table. So depending on the speed, he hits it. I don't know if there's a safety involved here. I don't think you can really get a good safety out of it unless you hit the six ball thin, cutting it to the bottom rail. Then you may get a safety out of it. But if you hit it thick, it's kind of up in the air. Did not get it under the nine. I think this is spinnable. I think John can spin it in. Let me get out and look, look through the glass. All right, so it's close enough to where he's going to break out the phone and uh, record it, and that way they can view it. I think where the nine is, though, it would be pretty obvious if he hit the nine first because, I don't know, like if you hit the six first, the nine's going to go upward. You'll see the six, you'll see the nine clearly move before the six. I don't think that he'll have an issue with this as far as seeing the hit. As a matter of fact, I don't know about making it and seeing the hit. Yeah, it's fine. Nine went up. Yeah. I think it was pretty obvious. Uh, you know, if you if you hit it bad, the nine's going to, like, you know, cue ball would do something different. It would carry him it in. You, you'd be able to see it. <clears throat> All right, so John made a nice shot. He's recovered, got a nice angle to shoot the seven in and in the side and come down uh, on the left side of the table, shooting the eight in the upper right. So uh, you can't just roll it, though. He kind of has to hit it with like a, a pop with a center ball and kind of stun it just a bit just to make sure he's not going near the eight. I like to make it go toward the left side rail and not toward the eight where he has a little bit of room. Okay, so a missed ball by Johnny. Didn't quite sell out. He did sell out position as far as uh, he lost control of the table. Um, 
You know, Tyler could uh, put the seven kind of behind the eight and go two rails up the table, or he could just uh, cross the seven with some inside and just bank it across the eight and use the eight as a blocker. Um, could be He could thin the seven upwards and try to get under the eight with a cue ball. So he has several options. It's just all what he's comfortable with, what, what he can do and get away with. I kind of like coming up the table here. Uh, banking the seven uh, below the eight and going two rails uh, to the other side down here below the ten. <clears throat> I think that's the best one and he thinks so too judging by where he's pointing his cue. You get that separation even if you don't get the hook you still have the separation as your friend so that, that will help out a lot. But if you get the hook, it's a bonus. If you get, to, you know, say you get the seven under the eight and the ten and the cue ball under the ten, where everything's in the way, that's definitely worth it. All right, so he overcut it just a little bit. Cue ball past the ten. All right, so I think for John to play safety, he just needs to cut the seven into the ten. I mean, cut the seven into the eight, replacing it, you know, leaving leaving the uh, seven where the eight is, and just go two rails. You don't go to the third rail. You just hit it with a high ball kind of thin, and you cut the seven into the eight, and you go two rails back below the ten. He's going to the other side of this. I don't know what he's doing. Is he just going to roll this and try to just split him and stay stay down there behind the eight? He's going to roll this? That's what he did. And he did a beautiful job. What a, what a shot. What a shot. That little symbol safety right there might win him this game. What a shot. Great touch. So many things come into play, like the roll of the table, like you have to trust the roll of the table. You know, if you don't hit exactly center ball, you got to look at it rolling off on a certain point. I mean, if you put a little spin on it, it might curve. You know, so that was definitely a good touch shot. So Tyler's going to attempt a two rail kick at the side pocket here and maybe try to stay near the eight, getting the separation. But in order to make this work, he actually has to hit it with a good amount of speed to get separation. Like if he rolls it slow at the side, it's going to stay there. So he needs to hit it with enough speed to go all the way down the table. And uh, the eight's going to be there as sort of a net to catch the cue ball. But you definitely want to hit below the seven where the seven's coming up table. You don't want to hit in the face or on the other side of it where the cue ball's coming out. Then that could be trouble. And he hit it right in the face. And John could possibly be tree-topped. And he can't go forward. The 10's kind of in the way to go forward and get on the 8. So John's definitely got his work cut out for him here. This is uh, super tough. Super tough. I wonder if he takes the glove off and shoots this right-handed for the extra power. Um, I don't see the bank available. I don't think that's available. <clears throat> Very hard to play safe here. I don't even see a safety that he could play. Wow, he hit it with enough speed to arc around the 10. What a great shot. That deserves a replay. He hit that ball so good. Like, uh, that was a great shot. I don't, I don't, I don't think y'all realize how good of a shot that actually was. That definitely deserved a replay. What a shot. What a shot.
All right, so John's made it all the way out after that monster shot. We got right on the eight and perfect on the nine here to finish this up to uh, get it back within one now. A little short of the draw here, but shouldn't be a problem. He's way off the rail, a little bit off angle. Uh, somebody in the crowd, phone stuff, you know, people are starting to come in and uh, I guess somebody's phone was ringing or something like that. Looks like. John must not have his music up very loud if he could hear that. He must just have it like at a low. Oof. A little bit of pressure right there. All right, so we're back within one game now. Tyler leading by one. And uh, John to break and see if he can uh, tie it up again, close that lead up. preparing to break and uh, I noticed he was getting a lot of flat breaks earlier and I think he adjusted a little bit and he's more so getting a lot more pop off the break like if you watch his cue ball off the one he's getting that two step off the rack where he's getting that double bounce off the rack and that seems to be when the balls are pocketed the best he was still pocketing balls with the flat break but it just seems like they end up so much better when you get that pop. So he is slightly elevated to get that. Yeah, so he made the adjustment to get the ball popping and that seems to help out with the way they spread and the way they go in. All right, so John doesn't have a good shot to continue the run, but he does have a decent shot to play safety. He can, um, Cut this one ball a little bit and uh, fan it out and get it to go below the 10 and um, hit this hit the side rail where the one's at and go right behind the four. So, you know, I would if I'm him, I cut this to go below the 10 and I use the four 10 as blockers and just control my speed on the one. Now he could try to thin it and go down here behind the two three towards the pocket, but I don't like that. It's no good. There's a couple of options to play safe. I, I just went to the one I think is the best, which is uh, staying behind the four and you're pushing the one down here below the 10. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. All right, so Tyler has a little piece of this one. He can cross it with inside, go behind the 8-6, pushing the one out to the middle if he can control the speed. like, And not too much spin because you don't want to hit the 8 and stop the cue ball. You want the separation, so you need the cue ball to go past the 6-8, and you need the one to get below the 10. All right, so a little bit too much spin there, and he twirled it out of there. All right, so John has a bunch of options for safety, actually. He can go behind the two, banking the one up the table. He can uh, just slide over behind the five, banking the one towards the left long rail behind the four, and just you know go to the right with the cue ball behind the five. 
could even draw it back up on the five and try to snug it. So what he's going to do is he's going to go behind the six. He called the side pocket just in case. He's going to go forward and try to snug it behind the six, two rails. He will, oh, he went to the five. Got to the side of it. All right, well, I chose the wrong ball. I chose the wrong ball. I didn't think he could get on the five, but he definitely uh, showed me that he could. All right, so... Tyler's going to have to force it over with a lot of uh, left spin to clip the one. <clears throat> Very hard to play safe from this. Oh, he thinned it, scratched. Uh, sell out there, and uh, John has a wide open table to clean up. One is going in the upper left. Just get off the straight in line so you can get on the three easily, and then back out to the middle of the table for the four, middle of the table for the five, maybe a little angle going towards the six off that five. Or you could, you know, go towards the rail and just get above the six that way, you know, hitting the bottom rail and come back up in between the ten six. I see a good pattern here. All the balls are going where they sit, pretty much. All right, notice he kept the angle where he could just float the two ball in and get on the three easily. And he's gonna lay on the bottom rail where he can easily go one rail back to the middle for the four. Um, and then middle for the five. And He'll have to choose which side he wants to get on. Tell you the truth, I kind of like going to the bottom rail more now that I look at it. You know, going across the six towards the eight, you know, it just could get a little funny going that way. It's a little easier to go, just go above the six, hitting the bottom rail, going above the six off the five. But, excuse me, I'm way ahead. He's still on the three ball, going out to the middle of the table for the four. We all know how he's going to run out. I just talk a little faster than he shoots. We'll be right back.
back just in time to come back for the first shot. Perfect. All right, so he's got a nice angle. It looks like he can draw this with straight draw and get right down, right to the top rail and get right back above the two. Nothing fancy, just straight draw. Draw it down in a straight line back up to the two. Like that. A little soft. A little soft, but it'll work. That's, that's, that's actually perfect. All right, so he's got a nice angle to just come back across the table. I like going to the second rail here and kind of getting off the rail pretty good where you can cue it up. You'll have a nice angle on the three to come backwards to the four that's on the right long rail. So two rails on this. I'm going to contact the second rail and get off it just a little bit. Oh, he missed it. He missed it. He must have jumped up on it. I don't know what happened there. Uh, let me catch the score up on the screen. It is tied up 57-57. But an unforced error after a good break. Uh, I know John's not happy about that. And uh, Tyler has a nice look to go ahead and finish this rack. Now... This, this could be a little touchy. I might consider if I'm him going around the three, shooting it in the same pocket. That way you can't get close to the three ball on accident or get a funny angle. Because you can get a funny angle on this if you try to like roll it. I kind of like coming out of there, maybe rail first and just coming all the way over to the other side rail and getting out above it, you know. You don't want to hit a soft and get below the three where you have to go around the 10 to get below the four. I mean, you can do it that way, but that's, you know, a lot more movement than you want to have if you can help it. So, so he's considering just cutting the two ball in, just cutting it in, hitting the bottom rail and giving himself a little angle going into that bottom rail off the three. Maybe. He's hitting it with draw. Wait a minute. Oh, is he drawing it straight out of there? I don't know what he's doing now. Okay. All right, well, I mean, he's kind of out in the middle of the table. He'll have to get the extension to make this, but it's not bad position. Um, I would actually probably shoot it left-handed if it were me. I don't like the bridge, so that would be my preference. But in any case, it's not a super tough shot. Three's off the rail. It's the right angle to go to the four with a little outside spin. And um, you can get straight on the four and shoot the five in the side, or you can keep a little angle and shoot the five in the same corner. Or, you know, it's all preference. You that close, you can you got a whole bunch of pockets to choose. It's all what you like. So he got a little straight. I wouldn't try to force this. I think I would just go forward, take the side pocket from here, from where he got. I mean, he does actually have enough angle where he could bounce it out. He could force it out and shoot the five in the same pocket. Or, you know, he could get below it too. But I kind of like just rolling it in and shooting the five in the side. You know, make the pocket play nice and big. Okay, he, cho he chose to hit it with pace. Uh, got a little angle to go across the table, shoot the seven in the same pocket. So he'll hit this with low outside and just go straight across and get uh, a nice shot on the seven in the same pocket as he's shooting the five right now. Man, picked his head up. He chose to baby that ball instead of hit it with pace. Notice how he just pointed at the rail. He knows that he was supposed to just shoot it with some pace and get all the way over and hit the rail and come back. So he has hooked John, but it's hanging in the pocket. And John plays a lot of one pocket, so it's no problem to kick to the pocket. Um, jumping, it's very hard. Well, it's not very hard, but it's harder than I like. 
but I, I guess jumping it would ensure that you don't scratch. I mean, kicking it, you kind of. So if he's going to kick it, you want to go two rails instead of one. You don't want to go one rail here. You want to go two. Oh, he's massaying it. Okay, never mind. Never mind. He's just going to masse and try to catch it in off the rail. Rail first here. Got it. A little far away from the seven, but he has a shot. He has a shot. It is manageable. Um, he's going to have to shoot it in with uh, some... Uh, Left English, some high left. You just go two rails out of that corner. Missed balls by both these guys making some uh, mistakes, but that was definitely a, a tough long shot. It wasn't easy to make it. And Tyler is faced with the same sort of shot that he had on the five. A little more angle on the seven, but it, what he's doing is he's just using low outside. He wants to go straight across and back out across the nine there, shoot the nine where it sits. It's uh, too much angle to go two rails. I think he could easily just draw this with low outside and stay above it rather than trying to go below it. That's where he pointed his cue like he was going below it, but I like definitely drawing this, putting an extra little draw and stay above the nine. It's worth it. Watch the side. I didn't think he needed to hit it that hard, but apparently he did. He felt like he needed to hit it hard. Now, a couple turnovers in this tied up game. Both these guys have shot two or three times. I think John will clean it up from here though. Shooting the nine in, just get over to the rail and back out towards the 10. Be coming right towards the 10 off this left side rail. So John with this 10 to take the lead for the first time today. And he has it. 58-57, John has taken the lead. back just after this uh, break is done. I'm going to go grab me a drink. I'll be right back.
All right, so Tyler wins a game back while I was gone grabbing my drink there. So back tied up at 58-58. And uh, this is a really close match. Real close, close match. So uh, here's the break. Tyler's going to try to go ahead and break this tie and pull out ahead. Uh, see if he can put that perfect break together again, get a nice look at this one ball. Would be, the, would be what I'd be looking for. All right, ball's down in the side. Uh, oh, okay. Not the greatest look, but he's got a look. He's got a good look. All right, so he's going to have to let the cue ball travel on this or either run it into the three ball. All right, so I would think that he'd cut this in and go around the two and leave himself a long shot on the two, or he could run into the two, pushing it down the table, trying his luck there. Or he could try to use the three ball as a net. I wonder if the two, I think the two uh, goes in that side pocket past the eight. So if you run into the three ball with your cue ball, he does have safety available too. Looks like he can stop his cue ball or pull it up towards the two bank and that one back on the opposite end of the table. And I think that maybe what he's considering is playing safety and drawing to the back of the three or to the two. So I think he's looking for a safety here, even though he's got a look. He wants to uh, try to lock the game in. I think he's going to pull it up right on the two ball here. Just draw it back to the two, bank the one up the table. All right, so that's what he's done. He didn't really close the gap that good. Uh, this might be jumpable for John. I know I would jump it, um, anything that's further than an inch I'm jumping it so that's that's my take on it he's looking at it I'm definitely jumping it I'm really jumping jumping gives you the best chance to uh, make it and probably get out from here okay so he's trying to take the kick is he calling the 10 or is he calling the one Oh, okay, there is no early 10, so he'd have no reason to call the 10 ball. All right, so he's calling the one in the lower left corner. And even if he were to make it, I think he'd have to get a little bit fortunate to get a shot on the two the way it's laying. got away with it. I don't think Tyler can see enough of the one to shoot it in. He may have to cross this towards the uh, lower left corner, or well, the upper left corner if you're looking at the screen, and uh, let the cue ball go up behind the eight and the seven. I almost like hitting hard enough to, to miss the pocket and go to a second rail into the middle. That way you can get the cue ball all the way down on this end. Um, leave it, leaving it half table if you don't hide them perfectly could be a problem. We'll see how it turns out. Let's get the, where's the, okay, he's got actually a full ball hit on this. He can actually stop behind this eight and three rail the one around the two, and maybe four rail it down the table here. I wish they had the little pattern thing where you could draw on the screen. I could show you guys what I'm talking about. 
but uh, let's change let's change the camera angle to where you can see it. That's camera four. See, he's straight on this ball. If he if he can bank it around the two five three rails and stop the cue ball there, it'll catch a uh, the third rail and drop down to the lower rail and uh, seven the eight will be a blocker if he can stop the cue ball. And it looks like all he has to do is just shoot it and stop it. It'll go around the two naturally. I don't think he has to do anything. Okay, he chose to go the other way. That was that was the shot that I called earlier. And I don't think he hit him on it though. John can actually see this. So if he can just cut what he can see of it and let his cue ball go naturally behind the 10-9, uh, two rails. Um, maybe. Maybe. I think the 5 might be in the way to get all the way behind the 9-10. But if you cut it towards the 8, the 8 might become that blocker that you need. Could bank it up the table and go behind the two five as well. I don't know what he was doing there. Was he? He put inside English on it where it checked up short. I don't know what he was trying to do there. But in any case, Tyler has a shot on the one. And uh, let's get back to the main view here. So he has a shot on the one. Very hard to get around. He'll have to draw around the 10-9 to get the shot on the two. Going forward's not an option. The 10-9 is in the way. So what he'll have to do is he'll have to cut the one in and draw the cue ball down to the bottom rail with some outside and pass the 10-9 going to the left. That's what I like. I think going forward is a mistake. You're bringing all kind of balls in play where you have to be traffic. I don't like going forward here. I think you got to draw. It looks like there's plenty of room to get past the seven, like just going straight down to the rail with a good stroke. See what he does with it. That was really surprising. Did not expect him to play a safety on that shot. But he did play it good. And uh, John's going to have to come up with something. I like jumping it where you get a nice full hit. You bank the one back up the table. You could even bank it towards the seven. And you might get lucky enough to use the 10-9 as blockers. A lot of traffic in the middle of the table. Oh, he's calling this one ball. He's going to cut it. See, a lot of times when you're trying to jump and cut the ball, it can bounce past it, or you can, you know, when you're shooting it thin like that, it's very easy to miss the ball. You know, so I, I tend to stay away from those thinner cut shots unless it's like right near the pocket where it's a great reward. And wow, that's all I can say to that. Holy crap. He, he hit that ball so good. Great shot. You got to take your hat off to a guy when he does something like that and he calls it. You just got to take your hat off and tell him good shot right there. So, uh, John's shooting lefty, so uh, this shot is a little bit harder to cut in for him because he's uh, opposite-handed on this side. This is the right-handed side, and he's got to shoot it left-handed. So, um, looks like he's playing a safety. He's aiming at it full. He's just going to bank it past the five and stay behind the five with the cue ball. Uh, he cut it a little bit and let it out, let it leak out. You're seeing some frustration being exposed right there. I can't figure out why he didn't just shoot it straight. The five was a big ball from there, but... Uh, 
he tried to like bounce off the rail and get it snug up on the five and it didn't come out right. All right, so the two is right there hanging on the side. He can draw over to the left rail, be straight in on the three. That carries position for the five. And um, I'd like to get off the rail shooting the five just because of where the seven is. If you got room, then you can go to the side pocket rather than shooting in a tight corner. So, um, all right, so he's kept a little angle on this. He may go ahead and uh, shoot the five in the same pocket because of this angle that he has. Well, he may be able to kill it right there. It looks, looks a little steeper on the screen than it does through the glass there. So he may stay on that side. He may not. Let's see what he does. Okay, he did. Gave himself the angle that we were talking about, so now he can go to the side or corner, whichever one he prefers. I kind of like the side pocket being where the seven is. It's very easy to get to the side, and the side offers more shape than the corner as far as how you can move the cue ball. So definitely choosing the bigger pocket if, uh, if it's feasible. So I like two rails toward the middle of the table for the seven and the side. All right, a little bit short on it, but that's okay. That's all right. He can uh, shoot the eight up in the corner. He can hit it hard enough to come past it for the side. Um, it looks like he might have the angle to cut that seven in and go around the 10, but I wouldn't recommend it. I, the best thing I think is I, I think you got to draw it to the bottom rail, straight down the bottom rail and back out, taking all of the other balls out of play if you just draw it straight down. Um, I don't know if he's going inside English here. It looks like he is going inside English. And that's why I said draw it straight down right there because it gives you the straight in shot and you got five or six feet going toward the eight before you get out of line. Um, so he's now out of line. He's going to have to make a good shot to get back in line. I would say cutting it in the corner, letting the cue ball go back and forth right there on that line would be the best thing to do from here or play safety could uh, push the eight up to the top rail and uh, put the cue ball maybe behind the nine or right on top of it make it hard to play safe or something hard to get out Now I think he's looking at cutting it in and letting his cue ball go back and forth. He's pointing at where he wants his cue ball to hit after he cuts that eight. It's going to go back and forth like that. Well, you might be right. He might be banking it. He's using draw, so. I don't know. I mean, he does have room to bank it. Got to put a little spice on the cue ball to stay out of trouble here. Can't let it go two rails toward the side, so he's got to draw it. And uh, You want to be on one side or the other, not the middle of the table, so he'll probably draw it with low outside. <clears throat> just depends on how hard he wants to hit this. Does he really want to juice it up, or you just want to hit it at a nice medium speed? What do you want to do with it? I don't know. I don't like this shot from here. It's funny. But he drained it. And he flirted with the side just a little bit, just enough to keep you on your toes. And uh, looks like he'll take the lead back after these two balls. Unless something uh, funny happens from here, which I don't see that. It's gone. Nice shot on the 10. So after this 10, Tyler gets to 59 first, taking that lead back.
and it's gone. All right, so it looks like we're going to have a short player break. So I'm going to take a break with them. And it looks like John's going to stay in practice.
All right, it's so Josh Roberts back in the booth, and they are starting back up after that player break. And uh, Tyler's back ahead by one. There's the break. Ball on the side. No shot on the one. Not a good shot. He has a bank at it. I don't know. The, the, way, the, the way the balls are laying, I would actually shoot at this because, like, the, the way the – uh, the way it's laying, it looks like he could bank the one and go, well, maybe not. I don't know. 
I don't know. From from the TV, it looks like he could do it, but uh, looking through the screen, it looks like that nine is more in play than I think. Looks like he could bank it in with top English and go one rail toward the three with the cue ball or maybe even toward the eight and have a uh, cut at the two in the uh, lower left. He's elevating though, so that's not what we're doing. I don't know. From here, I might have to consider a simple safety and uh, try to bank the one under the seven and get the cue ball on the other side of the three, or either go around the nine and go all the way behind the eight. <clears throat> One thing's for sure, safety is not automatic. It's definitely not automatic. I don't know what he just pointed at. Looks like he's gonna cut the bottom of the one and come three rails around and move the cue ball around. I, I definitely, uh, it's just not my style of one, uh, nine ball. All right, Tyler will be shooting this. I know John is not going to take this shot. So John was just checking to make sure he could have the option to give it back, but he definitely didn't want that shot. <clears throat> The jump bank looks promising, like he could jump it and try to bank it two rails back up the table. He may even get behind the 10, or at the very least get a rail to rail safety here. Um, I definitely don't like really shooting at it. Okay, so that's what he's doing. He's trying to bank it up the table. He just called the side pocket just in case. He just has to be careful not to uh, slide off the two ball and scratch. He needs to make sure he hits it with some a uh, little draw. So. Doesn't want to hit the two ball still bouncing, in other words, where he can't uh, slow the cue ball. So he did that, shot at two rails, and he got a safety out of it. Uh, put the 3-8 in between the two ball. And he's made it really tough to hit the two. I don't think uh, I don't think John can go behind the eight and hit the two. Very tough hit there. Um, it doesn't look like doesn't look like he can uh, 
high up anything. Okay, so he's calling the three in the side, so I guess he's going to try to go one rail, thin the two ball, and try to go or back around up the table where he is now. And he's just calling the three ball just in case because it's going that way. And he's done a very nice job. Beautiful. And he got a reward out of it. So Tyler has a two rail kick on the two ball, or he could just go inside the nine and kick it one rail toward the three. Maybe kick and stick behind the nine there, which I like that better. I think it's more control, and even at the cue ball, even it like that, yes. And even if you miss hit it a little bit, the cue ball is going downward toward the bottom rail, and you're getting that separation. You're sending it down in traffic where you have a lot of blockers in play. <clears throat> so I think that's the best option for uh, leaving a tough shot or even a safety. Kicked across it and kind of got lucky a bit. Didn't leave like a good shot on this. Um, I think he. I think it is cuttable, but it's not easy. Is what I mean when I say not a good shot. He has a thin cut. He has to earn this run. Very nice shot by John Moore, and uh, really good shot to uh, open it up and, and, and get a look at the run here. So now if you pay attention closely, if he drops down to the rail, just straight down parallel from where the three is, he has a nice big gap in between the 10-8 uh, to shoot the six in the side, and it has the proper angle to go toward the seven. Like, he can go all the way to the top rail or, you know. I don't know if he'll try to get it out of there, but I think he can just hit it simply and draw it straight down with some low outside. Okay, so he tried to get it out of there. And he still ended up with a shot on it. It's a funny shot, but it's manageable. He can shoot the six in the side and draw the cue ball with low outside and go two rails back on top of the seven. So low outside here, side rail, bottom rail, back above the seven. Oh, he overcut it. He overcut it. <clears throat> and that's why I was talking about just hitting the rail and coming up instead of like trying to like come all the way out. Just take what the table gives you right there. I mean, if he'd have hit that rail in between the 10 in the pocket and just bounce off 5, 10 inches. The 6 in the side is fairly easy for a player of his speed. So, in any case, Tyler has a straight in shot on the 6. He'll be able to draw back above the 7. And the 8 is right across from it in the side. So, it's okay to be straight in on that. Oh, careful now, careful now. Look at this. Alright, so uh, I think that'll take away from getting straight in. I think he's going to have to roll this and get the angle, go up to the top rail and back on top of the nine where he is now, but away from it. So he'll just be rolling this one in now. It's definitely an error getting on top of that nine ball. All right, he's got it. And he's got a lot of angle, but that's okay. That means he doesn't have to hit it hard to go one rail back above the nine now i don't know if he'll try to stay below it but to me it looks natural just to pocket the ball go one rail above the nine and you'll have to shoot the nine in and draw back to the ten <clears throat>
All right, so pretty good speed, almost ideal. Nice and close to the nine with the proper angle to come across the table to give you the 10. He's in the position where he has to draw at the least, basically. He just has to get past the side pocket on the left side of the table, and the 10 is fairly easy. So anything below that would be definitely easier. And he's done that nicely, getting himself straight in on the 10. And John's giving it to him. And he is now extended back out to two games. So Tyler back out to two games and breaking. We'll see what it looks like. break got one down in the side and the one ball came up to the side everything looks actually pretty good from here only problem is the nine ball is very close to that point making it a little bit hard to manage but if it's off the rail any you should be able to shoot it and pass the side um, and I'm looking at it down the pipe through the glass here and it does not look like it's off the rail at all it's froze the nine ball so that would be my only problem ball here. Everything else is uh, pretty much lined up. So the one sitting in the side, shoot the two in, and you'll go two rails back out to the middle of the table for the three. Right? So there's the angle. He's got to you can go two rails back out to the middle of the table for the three in between the eight and the nine. Oh, okay. I see what he's going to try to do. He's going to try to go ahead and nudge the nine right now and get it out of that trouble position now he has to be careful he doesn't want to hit the nine on the way in if you hit it thick on the way in it could pop in front of the cue ball and block the three so you just want to make sure you're hitting the nine like you know kind of full in the face you don't want to hit the other side of it okay he didn't hit it <clears throat> checking to see if it's on the rail uh, maybe he should plan to play above the nine shooting it down in the lower right uh, would probably be easier than pocketing it in the upper right and that's probably easier than trying to break it up with any of these balls that you're shooting you don't want to lose position trying to move that nine <clears throat> He's looking at maybe trying to break it up. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't mess with it if I were him. I would just look at the angle I need to get on the eight to get above the nine where I can shoot the nine in the lower right. So I'd be paying attention. Close shape on the seven to where it's easy to go to the nine. He could actually shoot the eight in the lower right, play the angle to go into the nine and move it off the eight. See, going one rail this way is the long way, but if he were to play the other side of that eight ball, 
shooting it in the lower right and playing the angle going toward the nine, straight toward the nine. That's a shorter distance and much more manageable in my opinion. But anyway, he's going to stay on this side of the eight and try to go one rail into the bottom of the nine, which uh, is not, not that easy. Okay, and it doesn't look like he did that great at that. He's gonna, he looks like he's just gonna have to try to shoot the nine up to table. He's gotten as good as he's going to get on it to shoot it up here in this corner. And it, it is froze to the rail. So uh, I won't say it's not an easy shot, but that point when you're shooting past it like this, for some reason, just gets really big sometimes. So he has to be very conscious of the point. And he hit it good. Beautiful. All right, so Tyler back out to three after this 10 balls down. Tyler breaking from dense center of the table this time. And he's scratched. Uh, first time he's changed his break spot since I've seen him. Um, breaking from the center there. And he's given John a nice opportunity. Table wide open. All balls, nothing touching. Everything's wide open. So. Yeah, if I'm John, I shoot the one... I like shooting the one in that corner and, and drawing around the four on the side that the cue ball is on right now. Shoot the one in and maybe draw straight back. You know, because you need the angle for the two to hit the rail unless you're going to shoot it straight and draw it back, which is not a problem, but it's harder. So. <clears throat> Drew it on out there. Nice shot. <clears throat> um, he may go one rail right back up the center in between the six five and shoot the four on the side. Could come around the ten six as well. Okay, so he chose the corner. It's not bad. He's Close enough to it, we should be able to just uh, pocket this and stay uh, stay on the same level as the five. You want to be able to just shoot it straight in, roll it in, the five ball, I mean. So a little stun stroke to get right near the side, just like that. Now he's in a good position to roll this in. 
If I'm him, I might shoot this with a little stun and let the cue ball drop down in front of the nine where you don't have to go to the bottom rail. You can just shoot the six and draw back toward the seven or either shoot, go into the side rail and toward the seven. I don't want to go into the bottom rail and you know contend with the 10 or the nine. I like to stay out of traffic if possible. Okay, so he's done that. Notice where his cue ball is going away from traffic to the side rail and back toward the seven. So a little bit of high left here or center left. We go straight into the rail and uh, back toward the side pocket, maybe a little past. You want to be nice and close to the seven where you can pocket it and get close to the nine where nothing is uh, hard to pocket at the end of the day. All right, nice shot. Got nice and close to it. He's straight, so he'll have to straight draw from here. He'll just uh, draw it back about five or six inches, maybe even a foot. Doesn't have to overdo it. Just get nice and close where pocketing the ball is not an issue. Okay, see that? Came back about a foot, foot and a half. And, you know, the nine is fairly easy from this position. And he'll go ahead and like kill it right there in this line. That way he has the pocket to bridge out of, you know, and that makes it where you have a little more room to stroke the uh, last ball. Okay, no, he punched it into the rail. I figured he'd kill it right there, but maybe he had more angle than I thought. In any case, this 10 ball down puts him back within two. Score 59-61 in favor of Tyler Steyer. And this is Josh Roberts commentating for the rail yard for those of you just tuning in. Let's get that score updated. Sorry, I've been sleeping. It's 61 So taking a short player break, and John will be right back. Go bathroom break.
right, everybody. Kyle Ferguson back in the booth here with you at Rail Yard Billiards. John making a uh, really uncharacteristic mistake there. Clipping the four ball. It'll be ball in hand for Tyler. Looking to extend his lead, 62 to 59. Been a tight race here the whole way. We got Josh Roberts back in the booth. Uh, yep, we're back. Tyler's got a cut. He's got a shot right at the side pocket. I mean, uh, so he'll be able to pocket this and just uh, kill it right there. Six is pocketable on the side. So, yeah, uh, miss. This looked at it when I walked up. It looked like uh, John fouled the ball, but I guess not. No, no, he and, didn't foul it. He he hit the one on the way in, but it's the cue ball still caught the second gotcha, rail. So yeah, even yeah. if it hit, you know, it still right. hit the second rail, so it wouldn't have been a foul. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So he just has to pocket this ball on the side. Very small side pocket here. Yeah. He's done that. He's done that. So. Uh, you know, I, I don't really like the position. I mean, it's, it's fine from here, but I would have stayed up high on the ball where I could bounce off the rail rather than uh, be below it. But either way is fine. It's just uh, <clears throat> in this position, he kind of has to uh, fall short of the straight line and go toward the eight with the cue ball. And that's the only thing I don't like about it. Okay, so he went all the way up top. And he's added moving parts. Right, right, right. Common theme for this match. Yeah, like me, I would have chose the side pocket on the four ball not to move it, you know, rather right. than take a longer shot and have to force follow the cue ball, you know, over 10 feet. So. It seems like... Uh, Cert certain him. players tend to favor side pockets versus corner pockets. Would you agree with that? Maybe? Well, side pockets are the biggest pockets on the table. Yeah. And that's what you have to understand, especially where the four ball is. That side pocket is very wide from there. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and the side pocket, I feel like you can you can play shape on any anywhere on the table from a side pocket just about. You know, there's not very many places you can't get to play shape. Sure. If you're on the side. All right, so he fell short, adding that moving part. So he's either going to have to draw into the seven or come around three rails around the uh, eight, ten, and get back above the seven. And I think that's what he's going to choose is uh, going all the way around and just getting back above the seven, not hitting anything. And he's done that little bit of distance in between the cue ball and the seven but it is manageable and um, he's gonna draw rather than follow you know me I, I like to follow it makes the makes it where you can hit the ball softer pocket plays bigger and you get to play to the bigger side pocket so, um, yeah but he's gonna pop it in with a little speed and stay above the eight and he's done that nicely and uh, he's got a nice angle to just shoot the eight in and slide over a touch for the uh, 10 ball in the same pocket. Okay, well, he let the stroke out, didn't he? Yeah. A little, little more. Over and back out. Well, you mentioned that yesterday, that Tyler tends to go with the longer follow through maybe yeah, move the cue ball a little more and let the cue ball move rather than just uh, kill it with a softer stroke sure will and there's nothing wrong with that if you can complete it all the time sure but you just have to understand when you add speed to the cue ball that makes the pockets play smaller you know you're making the cue ball move further so now you have more things to control yeah you know Either way, if you can do it every time, it's fine. So we uh, we started the day more trailing by three. We're nearly five hours in, and the, the margin is three. still three. And, you know, we talked about this, uh, I think, for me anyways, I think this is what Tyler has to do to win. If he can stay in this position, I like his chances of uh, coming away with it. Whereas if John could get ahead just a little bit, I don't think Tyler overcomes that, you know, but... Uh, 
Yeah, just, I well, mean, really been trading racks back and forth all day long. One thing I noticed is that when John is down, he's fighting really hard. He's playing real hard, paying attention. But then once he gets it even or close, you know, to where, where he got ahead, actually, a game, you know, he tend to get a little loose and not keep control of the table and take more chances. Sure. You know. <clears throat> Break it from dead center again. Balls get I, kissed. Why, why is he breaking from dead center? I don't understand. He was having much more success. Yeah, yeah. Breaking off from uh, breaking off center. He was uh, hitting them much more square. I don't understand why he changed his break spot. Yeah, it seems like I've noticed that with other players as well, where like they'll get a ball down, they'll come up with a shot, and there'll be the you know some minuscule thing that they didn't like about the break and they'll go ahead and change where they were but to me like you said you get a ball down you're looking at the one ball in the pocket why would you eat no matter if balls are tied up or not you're in control of the table why exactly. would you want to change that you know exactly, exactly. so uh, yeah that's two breaks that he broke bad for the center the first one he tried from the center he actually scratched hmm. and then that one actually hit the side rail too so I don't. I don't think he's hitting them as square from the center as he does just breaking off offset just a bit. Yeah. All right. So John is in a funny little position here. He's going to have to draw below the three to get a shot. Um, he's a little straight on the two to force it out to the middle to shoot it in the lower left. So I think he's coming backwards. He wants to get below the three where he can shoot it in the side or corner. And he's done a nice job, nice stroke, dead straight in on the corner. Uh, perfect angle to do what he wants with the four. Um, and now it's a little bit of a touchy shape, right? Because of where the five is, the eight's kind of blocking. Right? So yeah. he's, he's got to uh, choose his shape carefully on the four ball to get to the five. Yeah, definitely the, the entire <laughs> rack, really. These these three shots because once you fall on the six the seven's over the side eight's right next to it i mean it's just right, everything right. Every, uh, everything else is more open where you have a lot more room to negotiate with and, and this five ball you don't have any room really all right i like that i like where he crossed i think he went a little further than he meant to but he's got the right angle if he just cuts this in he's got the right angle to just come right back in between the eight five uh, being nice and close to that five. I don't like going on the outside of the eight towards the seven. I like just coming right in between that eight, just above the uh, five ball. And that's what he's done. Good speed, nice negotiation. Got a good angle to get out to the side rail and back toward the middle for the six. Yeah, this looks like ball in hand position to me. It is. It's an ideal position for a lefty. This is his side of the table here. like he's examining the seven in the upper corner past the eight but I don't I don't think he's got a funny angle to do that I think he should just shoot the six in and just get above the seven he doesn't have to put the inside he can stay out in the middle and give himself the angle to cut the seven if he wants um, but he looks like he's examining the side and corner shooting the seven up the table so let's see what he comes up with That's what he's done. Hit it with a nice inside in the stroke. Got perfect on the seven to float out to the eight ball position straight in. Or he could even go forward and shoot the eight in the side. It's all preference. You know, so he has a few options here. Perfect position in any case. And he missed it. He missed, he missed that ball. Wow. 
but so, yeah. that was definitely ball in hand position. Yeah. He missed that ball. Wow. I did not expect that. Johnny, uh, maybe I'm sensing a little bit of fatigue here. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, I mean, we've, we've seen both players do that over the last three days. I mean, just uncharacteristic mistakes. And, uh, you know, I know the pressure's on for sure. But, like you said, once you're there, I mean, you just got to do what you got to do. Right. You're in the match. Right. Tyler breathing it off. Happy that he got a shot out of it. It is not an ideal shot, but it is makeable. It is as cuttable. You can cut this in. <clears throat> it's just a question of what he's going to do with the cue ball. I like just going straight up and down the table. I'm going to cut this in with pure top English, no spin. But he's using spin. I'm looking right down the pipe. He's using outside. Got it. Come around the table. He's got the eight inside. Beautiful. Yeah, very good shot there from Tyler. Beautiful shot. <clears throat> Tyler looking to take full advantage of this mistake, examining the table, table. Even though he's only got three balls and perfect shape, ideal shape to get out, he's still making uh, quite sure that he chooses where he's going and why. speed and uh, another opportunity from John that Tyler's been able to steal. More like John give that one away. That was a uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. he had ball in hand position on that seven out. I mean, you couldn't have placed the cue all better with your hand to get on the eight. And he missed that ball. I would argue that he played too good a position on it and he took that shot for granted. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because he makes tons and tons of hard shots. And the only thing I could think is that he just kind of took his eye off of that ball knowing that it was easy. I want to give a uh, shout out to our sponsors while uh, Tyler does a little bit of work on his tip. Jam Apparel, Diamond Billiards, Q-Tech. Michelle Griffin, local realtor, and uh, Johnny Brunk Print Services, as well as Burning Barrel Skill Machines, popular here. Our score is 63 to 59. So John, uh, Tyler is only 12 away from the, the money, actually. Yeah, yeah. And John is still 16 away from the money. And uh, that was, a, that was a, a huge, huge game right there. Quite a few errors from John today that he did not make yesterday to uh, uh, put that run on. And so uh, Tyler's looking to take advantage and... Uh, Keep on extending out, pull away, and secure the lead.
So Tyler, uh, a little unhappy that he wasn't able to come up with a shot on the one here. It looks to me like he could, uh, I'm not sure, maybe a little thin, possibly play a two-way banking cross corner and coming down for the two. But I think either way you'll see him shoot this one ball towards the corner pocket, whether or not he plays safe and goes all out for the, the defense. or. Yeah, he actually has a safety where he can uh, bank the one towards the middle diamond right here on the top rail mm -hmm. and go one rail right down behind the uh, two ball, like in between the 10-2 and float right down in there. He's actually got a nice path to do that, like a straight line. He just has to see it. It's late in the match, players starting to talk to themselves. <laughs> you know, I don't see any reason to overthink this. Just looking for a place to put that cue ball. Skyler joking, uh, Scott Frost is sitting here in the rink. Skyler says, Scott, you want to twist this ball in for me? Scott Frost. Good to see a little bit of humor under a pressure situation, of course. to go all out on the safety. That's the shot I just called. Yeah. Yeah, Josh. Uh, as Josh said, the, uh, the shot he called there, one ball towards the center diamond. Uh, he was unable to find cover behind the two. Shot from John there. He wants the one to slow down, and it does. Tyler's going to be dead behind this four ball. Wouldn't be surprised to see him get the short stick here. I believe that's where he's headed now. has called the two ball, so he's going airborne here, playing the one-two combo.
Good shot from John there, straight into the heart of the pocket. Take a quick peek at the overhead. Two ball does go by the eight. He would really like to shoot it in the side. I believe he will. Take his cue ball three rails around for the four ball in the corner. And once he gets there, the rest of the rack opens up nicely. Just overcuts the ball. A tough shot, no doubt. John showing a little frustration here. Just been unable to capitalize on some of these key racks where Tyler's given opportunities. Which becomes more and more important the closer we get to the end of this race. It's been a lot of that, um, a lot of that in this match, really. But when you're playing such a long race, you have time to overcome it. From here, it's all just about maintaining the right angles. I like to play shape for uh, three balls ahead. Got everything open, so he's looking at the five ball where he wants to leave on the seven ball to get to the eight ball. From here, he will look at where the nine is, knowing that he needs to be somewhere on the eight to land on that after he shoots the seven. So Tyler Steyer in great position. Extend his lead to five. I'm not sure if it's been, uh, been that large yet today. He started uh, with John trailing by three. I know I've seen Tyler get to four a few different times. Haven't been able to catch the entire match, but... Uh, these gaps in the score become more and more important, of course, the longer this day goes. If you think of it in terms of, uh, you know, if we trade racks from here and Tyler lands at 65 to 60, basically spotting a 20 to 15 race John is to Tyler and it's not certainly not the way they would ever match up it becomes a lot more difficult to to overcome that Good out from Tyler. Just uh, a few, a few less mistakes. It seems like today from Steyer's side. Our score is sixty-four to fifty-nine. This is Kyle Ferguson with you at Rail Yard Billiards in Louisville, Kentucky. Just before this event, uh, or this, this match here, we had an event called the Mini Derb Open. First year for that event, we're about 20 miles from where the Derby City Classic is held. The casino there set up that tournament as a uh, kind of a warm-up event. Really happy with the, uh, the way things went for the first year. Had a lot of good players out. Skylar Woodward, Billy Thorpe, 
Scott Frost, Tony Chohan, Fedor Gorst. Just to name a few, we should have named it the Fedor Gorst Open. He won every event, the exception of the Bank Ring Game, which he also won, but split with Earl Age Jr., local bank player. Meanwhile, in this match, rack 124, Tyler Steyer to break. It's a great pop on the cue ball. The one ball is dressing up nicely as long as the five doesn't ruin his plans. And it's going to clear out of the way. Great opportunity here for Tyler. This is the exact break that both players will be looking for. One of the things that uh, a lot of people believed gave Tyler such an edge in this match is his, uh, his ten ball break, which is so powerful, very well controlled. They are racking by hand with a wooden rack. Definitely introduces a lot of variables. We haven't seen any, uh, you know, I think it, it shows in the, the stats, we haven't seen any break and runs put together by players, you know, a few here and there, but we are playing on four and a quarter inch pockets and we've had rain here off and on all week. Humidity's higher. The table's definitely not playing easy by any means. They, they will accept balls, but you have to hit them well. Can't force balls into the pocket or cheat it too much. They'll just rattle. Just a little bit tricky here on the two ball. Doesn't have a whole lot of angle. Has plenty to work with, but the distance means he's going to have to hit this ball with quite a bit of pace to get where he needs to on the three. Draws all the way back, but does not want to get behind this seven, and that's exactly where he is. That was kind of the problem with that shot. It fell so straight in and, and trying to control your draw from that distance, extremely difficult. So we're gonna see Shorty come out here and try to get the three ball down. Good thing is with the eight ball over the side pocket, he doesn't need to do too much with the cue ball. Just get this ball down and wherever the cue ball lands, you're, you're probably gonna have a shot either in a pocket or comboing the eight ball. And he's going to get away with one here. Rolls right behind the four. I like kicking this ball off this, the right side rail, um, trying to hit it towards the middle diamond. Oh, he's queuing like he can see a piece of this. He was looking to get behind the seven with coverage. He does put it uh, in a position, regardless if Tyler can see it or not, it's so close to the 10 ball the rail there, he's not going to be able to do much with it. Comes 
I'm going to look to see uh, what might happen with these three balls if he was to kick into the bottom of the three. I don't think uh, I don't think the ten lay is where it'll make the eight or anything like that. Have a quick look at the overhead here. Yeah, so he's just going to come off the ball. You can definitely see some of it. A couple of things you have to avoid here, though. Uh, depending on how thick he, he's going after this ball, it could double kiss. And then also the scratch. He'll have to overcut it to get to the left rail. The right rail as we look. I'm looking down the shot uh, from the booth. He's called it cross corner. We'll have a look to see the, uh, the path this three ball takes. John's going to be able to see this ball. He did do a uh, little bit with that eight ball, though, kind of covering it up with the ten. Not sure what's available for the eight. If he had uh, a chance to take his cue ball into the ten, I'm pretty confident it would make the eight ball. It's pointed just at the uh, outside side pocket face. Again, John just unable to get the ball down. I have to think it's starting to settle in uh, to his head a little bit. If I'm John, I'm thinking I need to kind of take a break and reset here because stuff's definitely not going his way. Even the, uh, really the layouts, you know, it's funny how pool can go sometimes. It's like when Tyler has the the open shot to run out, everything leads to the next. And, and not that John's not getting outs he should be making, but they just require a little bit more work. Cool to go that way sometimes. We saw a lot of those momentum shifts yesterday. John started the day down 11, pulled to actually leading the match by two. Then later Tyler pulled ahead by 10 once again, and uh, John finishing the day down three. So. A lot of big swings in the score yesterday. Today's been a lot of back and forth. This is really the first time we've seen one player pull any kind of distance between the other. And even still, it's just a margin of five. Good speed there. You know, if the, uh, if the eight ball doesn't go naturally, he might be able to shoot the, the seven off the eight. Well, he, he can definitely shoot the seven off the eight. It's really just a matter of what happens after that. But the, the ten ball should hold the eight ball pretty close to the pocket. So he may be looking to play five, six in the top left, and then pop out to shoot the seven off the eight. And he really doesn't have to hit it very hard to get separation between uh, the eight and the ten. The only real concern would be if the eight were to roll just in front of the side. And uh, in front of the point of the side pocket instead of remaining open to it. Having a look at that now. Take a look at the overhead here. The, the eight ball's well outside of the pocket, uh, enough to shoot the seven off of it. So it's really a matter of just what's gonna happen with that eight ball afterwards. As I look at if it if it hits the ten first, it should go into the rail and pop out. The only real concern would be if it goes just in between the rail and the ten ball and gets stuck there, and his cue ball is not in a spot where he can cut it down the rail. So that's something he'll uh, be well aware of and try to guard against. Nice 
nice smooth stroke there from Tyler. Definitely uh, hits the ball similar to, uh, I might say, like a Fedor Gorst as far as his stroke goes. Longer stroke, long follow through, drops the elbow down. So this is the shot for the rack here. What's going to happen with this eight ball? Very, very well controlled. He did get into the 10 ball first. Just looking to see what kind of angle he has here. I, I think, I think you got to look to play this 10 ball all the way up table, which is what he's doing now. You, you know, it's on one of those weird angles where you could draw and hit the, the point of the side pocket and pop out into a no man's land. So just follow down. Even if you have a slight back cut, he's going to make the shot 99 out of 100 times and, uh, you know, win the game. And he actually had enough angle to even follow through and out. He may just roll this in the side pocket. One thing you know that the uh, the adrenaline's running with these guys. Anytime they have an opportunity to move the ball, it's just so much more comfortable than trying to tighten that arm up, you know, versus just rolling forward for the ten. He really could have got similar position, but wanted to let that stroke out, and burn some of that uh, adrenaline off. Can't blame him for that. Playing for eighty thousand dollars and uh, extends his lead to six here. It is sixty-five fifty-nine. Tyler Steyer over John Mora. This is Kyle Ferguson coming to you from Rail Yard Billiards. I'm going to step away for just a quick second. I'll be right back in the booth with you. Enjoy the action.
All right. Kyle Ferguson back in the booth here with you. Tyler able to clean that rack up. So extends his lead, 66 to 59. It's another good opportunity here. Really, this is the hardest shot of the rack. Just needs to get this one ball down. Dead center of the pocket. What a good shot. Uh, I had a uh, little bit of a discussion. Tyler says he did not touch the ball, but it fell. So we're gonna we're gonna take a break. Take a break real quick so I can take a look at where this two ball was exactly and uh, we'll be right back. All right, we just uh, needed to pull up the replay real quick, see where the two ball was. It had uh, fallen without being touched, so it gets put back up, but we wanted to make sure which side of the pocket exactly. We've got that figured out now, and we can uh, resume play. Again, just in case you're confused by what happened there, uh, Tyler had shot the one ball. The two ball was, was hanging in the corner pocket, and as Tyler was moving away from the table, he, he didn't touch the ball, but it just fell on its own. In that situation, the ball comes back up, and uh, Tyler continues to shoot, but we wanted to make sure we knew exactly where the ball was in the pocket. It will you know affect how he's able to play position on this three ball, so we just took a little break. 
look at the uh, the recording and got it all figured out. its feet a little bit but goes down and the uh, the rest of this rack gets pretty simple simple being a relative word for somebody like Tyler Steyer uh, he has one more shot to make the nine ball just makes position on the six a little bit uh, I wouldn't say funny you just you have to be careful that you don't get yourself behind the nine but uh, where he's at on the four ball he's gonna have Great opportunity to set up his shot on the five wherever he needs to, to to get on the six. I don't see it posing any kind of problem. Really just uh, speed control on these next three shots, and uh, that's going to be the end of it. Eight ball close to the corner, nine ball hanging over the side. He's got a nice angle here just to drag straight across. Touch of draw, and that'll be uh, what I would call the end of this rack. Never like to put the old commentator's curse on anybody, but I just got a feeling it's going to be just fine here. Good shot there, good speed. And Tyler started to even play with a little bit quicker pace, which I really like to see for him. Uh, I think shows the confidence he has. Balls are hitting center of the pocket. You get the sense that he's able to uh, really sense the finish line here. Needs just nine racks from here. Tyler Steyer pulls within eight of closing this match out. Sixty-seven he leads over John Moore of fifty nine, raced to seventy five for eighty thousand dollars, posted in the middle. We've got a great match. It's been a lot of fun to watch this. A lot of uh, a lot of swings, especially through yesterday. The first day, Tyler led by 11. He actually led by quite a few more than that. Uh, I believe it was four racks that John put together at the end while Tyler was on the hill. And uh, yesterday, John came out swinging, erased that lead, and actually led by two. I believe it was 32 to 30 at one point in favor of John. Tyler made another... Uh, Another run at the score, getting the lead back to 10 on his side, and then uh, John closing out the day just down by three. And that was really the, the score line for this entire day until the last 30 minutes or so. Um, you know, they, they were kind of just trading racks back and forth. Uh, Tyler was maintaining that three-game lead. John tied it up a, a couple times but was never able to get, get ahead. And now... Uh, Last 30 minutes to an hour, Tyler's kind of run away again. So it's going to be a dry break here. You see uh, John's strategy game come into play. There's nothing offensive uh, available to him. Might see him just clip the side of the one and get behind the seven here. Thin shot. He might even be able to, to put Tyler right on the seven ball. Is what he does. Take a look at the overhead camera here. See just what's available. 
one ball does go in the side. The five ball kind of makes the kick a little bit funny. If, uh, if Tyler elects to go that way, he might have to play with just a touch of inside. But he, he even has a chance if he overdoes it. It looks like he, he can see a piece of this the way he's queuing. I was going to say, even if he hits this uh, one ball, spins a little thick, it could go in off the seven, but he likes just to thin off of the ball, maintain control of the table. It's a good shot. John's just having a close look to see if he has a gap between this 10-9, uh, how much of the one he can actually see. You can see enough of the left side of it to uh, put this one ball on the rail and get behind the seven. But he didn't have enough of the ball to, to control his speed with that. I'm not sure what the end goal was there, there but um, in any case, he's left Tyler another opportunity here. Everything just seems to be going Tyler's way. And John's unable to uh, to regain control of the table, so. And Tyler's racing to eight from here. John's 16, so definitely up against it. Confident stroke there from Tyler. Center ball just dragging all the way across the table. Hit that ball very smooth. Looks like his stroke's in, uh, in good form right now. He's fell on, falling a little straight here. Um, would have liked to have been either on the rail to create some sort of angle or stopped well short of where he is. But uh, I think you'll see him just play for the bank. He was sizing that up just a second ago. I, th I think it's the right play can maintain an angle to to back bank the ball stay below or at the side pocket just like that he'll, he'll bank this ball backwards and play three rails around for the six in the bottom left so uh so this is the shot of the rack here you know the shape's pretty natural really just all about getting the ball down the cue ball naturally wants to go this way Of course, uh, bank pool popular here in this area, Kentucky, Ohio. Great shot there from Tyler. It's uh, something a lot of players everywhere have started playing because of the Derby City Classic, which kicks off this Friday and uh, kicks off with the bank division nonetheless. Start to see uh, a lot of these guys really pick up, uh, pick up their bank game, one pocket. A requirement to play in all events at Derby to, uh, to qualify for the all-around title, which gets you an extra twenty thousand dollar payday. So you got to swing at that. So there's a couple options here. You can just follow forward straight to the bottom rail, or use a low ball to go to the left side rail and then down. But I think either way, he'll try to get below this eight ball. 
And I would be wrong. <laughs> Stays above the ball, but uh, all preference there. That's just my own preference. I like getting below that ball here. It's just natural one rail forward to the eight, but he'll play uh, two rails forward, I believe. Man, he's uh, making a liar out of me, one rail. I have to have a talk with Tyler after this. In any case, makes excellent work out of this rack. Fell a little bit out of shape on the uh, on the four ball, but recovered nicely with a cross side bank. And Tyler is at sixty eight. Just seven racks away from defeating John Mora. Race to 75 for $80,000. Crowd is starting to pull in here and watch the, the end of this match. Appreciate you all hanging out with us. This is Kyle Ferguson at Rail Yard Billiards. We are in Louisville, Kentucky, close to where the Derby City Classic, big tournament, biggest of the year. A lot of players coming in town for. We've got a lot of. Great players here in the in the pool room, hanging out. Scott Frost, I believe he's going to join us in the booth here shortly, call the end of this match. Tony Chohan in the corner. Rack number 128. Big break there from Tyler. Gets the seven ball down in the side. If the six ball cooperates, it does. He's gonna have another golden opportunity here. His break has really turned on these uh, these last four or five racks, I'd say. Really throughout the event, event post the players were a little bit inconsistent with the break. They were they are hand racking, of course. Can make a big difference on uh, how consistently you can get balls down and come up with a shot, but. Right at the right time, just what the doctor ordered. Tyler's found it here at the end of the match. He's uh, put together a lot of great breaks. Opportunities to extend his lead. The, the few opportunities John has had, um, he's just unable, unfortunately been un unable to capitalize. Missed a couple balls, a couple safeties he let Tyler get away with. And, uh, that's, what's, uh, that's what's created our, our margin on the score so far. Fell a little bit straight here, and uh, I think you'll see a big stroke, big draw stroke between the 3-8, catches the 3. Gets a fortunate kiss, though. He's going to have a shot at this ball. It did not have to work out that way, but uh, you know when they say you're playing good, fortune tends to go your way as well. So If he doesn't like the slice at this ball, of course, he could play behind the 8, but I really think you're going to see him shoot this ball. He's... Right-handed, able to reach this easily. He's just having a look, I think, at his path to go straight up and down with the cue ball. Land on the four. And now he's he's having a look at, at spinning the ball over. One of the things that Josh Roberts, uh, in the booth with us earlier, liked to call out is how much Tyler likes to move the cue ball, spin it around the table versus playing uh, you know more simple patterns. It's really a preference. He does have a bigger stroke, likes to uh, to let it out more. So looking to spin this two rails underneath the four. Yeah, ends up going the straight up and down. I think that was the right shot. He just uh, he just overcut the ball. I mean, everybody misses. Michael Jordan missed. Just didn't see that on the highlight reel, right? It was never a hanger. So uh, John Mora in dire need to, to make something happen here.
I don't like his chances uh, to get out here. Everything's pretty straightforward. Even with uh, some of the uncharacteristic misses that John has had, I, I think he's going to bear down and get this done. It's all about the break from here. If John can do what Tyler's done the last four or five racks, put together you know a couple breaks, keep Tyler in his chair, you know this match doesn't have to be over. John Mora, one ten ball away to reach 60. Trails by eight to Tyler and a race to 75. Appreciate y'all hanging out with us today. John gets that rack ready. Take a look at our sponsors here. Definitely made this event possible. We have Q-Tech, Diamond Billiard Products. We have 30 of Diamond's tables here at Rail Yard. Eight nine-footers with four and a quarter inch pockets. 22 bar boxes. As well as Burning Barrel Skill Games by Pacematic, Popular game here at Rail Yard. By all of our patrons. We had Jam Up Apparel in the house all week selling some of their... Uh, Awesome billiards apparel. We're also sponsored by Michelle Griffin, local realtor here. Definitely who you want to talk to if you're in the Kentucky, southern, Indi southern Indiana, pardon me, area. As well as Johnny Brunk Print Services. Does a lot of our print work here at Rail Yard. Fantastic dude. Great quality work. So we are kicking off rack 129. John Moore at a break. It's a good hit. The uh, balls go down on the side. Cue ball gets kicked around a little bit. He can see the one. It also got kissed, but uh, unfortunately for John, I think the five ball is dead in the way for this ball. So I don't think we're going to see anything offensive here unless he were to play maybe a cross corner, but... You don't want to bet the game. I know it's kind of got a little bit of a two-way built in with the 2-3 the and the, the 6 he could get behind. But I think John really needs to just go all out on, a, on playing a good defense, make sure he maintains control of the table here. He doesn't want to give away anything. Tyler's hitting the ball really well right now and uh, breaking well. You just you can't risk giving up the table when you're this far behind. Tyler only needing 7 from here. I believe the two ball does go. A quick look at the overhead camera here. It's close. But, uh, first order of business here is, is what we're going to do with this one ball. He plays the four ball and the cue ball comes in and kisses behind it. Or the, the one ball rather. Wow. He's trying to bank that one ball straight down. Give him a shot on it next. And uh, the cue ball sat right in front of the pocket and the one ball chased it in. Man, what a roll there.
So Tyler, I, I believe he's decided that the two ball doesn't go. Either that or he's coming in behind it to shoot it in the side pocket. But I, it looks to me like he's going to be playing two rails tight to the corner pocket and out to break out the two ball. Close to the corner. He, he just didn't get close enough to the corner pocket, I don't think. If he, if he was indeed trying to hit those balls, which I'm sure he was because there was no reason to, to move his cue ball that direction. Get your cue ball a little bit closer to the, to the corner pocket. Comes out at a much steeper angle and he would have been able to catch the three ball. But I could be wrong. Again, Tyler likes to move his ball. He might have been playing for this all along. Yeah, yeah, he likes to duck from here. So I, I think he did want to clip those balls just a little bit. Looking to get behind the five here. He's done that nicely. this he just has the left edge available as we look I like to thin this ball get his cue ball all the way back down table key here is just not putting the two ball in front of the, the corner pocket but uh, first key is not hitting the five ball of course that's a uh, two two ball in hands for Tyler in this rack pretty pretty rare that you see that I don't uh, I don't expect John's going to have an opportunity to give ball in hand again here. Tyler playing with a lot of confidence right now. Has an open table. I definitely look for him to get out. No real problems. Every ball leads to the next. Three is close to the five. Just maintain an angle to come across for the six. And then the, uh, the seven's right there. Eight's right next to the seven. And... Just a golden opportunity here, really, for Tyler. Both of these players uh, won in this match bad. You know, they're uh, we've been here for the last week with the mini derb event. They showed up uh, a few days early, spent a lot of time on this table, and even during the match, John was here several hours after each match, practicing his break, running out. Tyler was here uh, every day early late morning, early afternoon, getting ready. They've played a few times. John was the winner last time they played in Las Vegas right after the Moscone Cup. Won by uh, just one or two games. Very close. You know he definitely wanted this one bad to try to right that wrong. Stroke there. Punch the cue ball off the rail. In this situation, it's all just all about maintaining the right angles. You don't want to make uh, any more work for yourself than you need to. Just double check. But I really like the pace Tyler's playing here. You can see he's not uh, not laboring over every shot. He's just walking around, checking the angle, going straight into his routine. Whereas uh, over the last couple days, you tend to see Tyler look at the shot for quite a while before he ends up pulling the trigger. And we are at 69 to 60. Tyler Steyer leading over John Mora. don't want to say I told you so, but I did mention that if Tyler was able to maintain his lead today, even if it stayed close, I liked his chances of, of pulling out of this. 
had a feeling if John was able to do what he did yesterday and make up a lot of racks on, on Tyler, it would have been tough for him to come back. I guess we'll never know if that part was true. I'd like to still think it was, but but Tyler's playing with a lot of confidence here. He's, uh, his break has been tremendous the last four or five racks. So we'll see if he's able to repeat that here. Not a good sign for John's side. Six ball down in the side. Ten ball is going to go in the corner. That's going to spot up, but uh, Tyler, wide open. Look at the one ball. Once again, great break. This has been a uh, really fun match to watch. Hope you all have enjoyed it. We uh, still not not anywhere near the finish line. A lot of fun stuff can happen between now and then, but uh, as we do get closer to the end of the day. Needs this ball to slow down a little bit. It's okay. He'll be able to reach this one fine, being right-handed, but uh, as thin as he is, it's all about how do we get on the three from here. Could go into the 10 ball, which is what he just looked at. He would need the cue ball to travel through the 10, uh, a good six or seven inches. So, uh, looking like he may want to spin out to his left, which is what he does. That was a really good shot there, really good uh, speed control. Kind of unfortunate to get dead over the eight ball. But uh, I think that you can tell by his reaction or lack thereof just speaks to the confidence that he has right now. Over the last couple days, I think you would have seen Tyler get a little bit upset being Jack over this eight ball. Uh, but he's not even paying any attention to it. Just says, I'm going to roll this ball in and take what's next. And he hits it dead center of the pocket. He's just He's got a... Uh, He's got a sense of the table right now. You can see that he hasn't had this entire match. It's really fun to watch, really. Just one more tough shot to negotiate here. Uh, needs to get this ball down. And uh, the shot itself is not as tough as negotiating his cue ball. The 7 8, both big balls here, uh, the 7 in particular, trying to come back down for the 5. Just needs to make sure he gets, uh, gets close enough to the 7 off the first rail that he doesn't have to worry about anything off the second, which is what he did. And that ball nearly hanging up. And uh, Tyler wastes no time at all, just immediately grabs his jump cue, calls the side pocket. Good look at what he's uh, faced with here. really liked his chances at making that ball. The way he's playing right now just felt like uh, things were going his way. But John Moore, an opportunity to, to steal this one. A couple funny rolls for Tyler. He, uh, you know, jacked himself over the eight, did good to, to get that ball down, shooting the three. Had a little bit of a tester on the four. It wiped its feet and uh, just kind of lost his cue ball a little bit. Was unable to make the bank or the, uh, the jump shot rather. So these these are the kinds of things that the opportunities that John has had that he's unable been unable to capitalize on. 
definitely speaks to uh, the current score line. I think more so than anything else in this match. Nonetheless, John Morris says, I'm still here, fighting hard. Just two more balls to reduce the lead to eight. Dead in the heart, so John reaching 61, trailing by eight to Tyler, a race to 75. This is Kyle Ferguson at Rail Yard Billiards. We're in Louisville, Kentucky, about 20 miles from the casino where Derby City's held, so. A lot of players coming in this way as they uh, get ready for the Derby kicking off this Friday with the Nine Ball Banks division. Got word from Diamond that the Nine Ball event actually sold out. All 500 spots are filled right now. Hope you got your entry fee in for that. If you were planning on doing so, I believe the bank is just a few spots away from filling. So it'll be a great event. Derby City is always a ton of fun. We ran a mini derb event just before this match kicked off. First year for doing that. We uh, we just opened this pool room the past uh, last May, not quite a year yet, and uh, set up the mini derb event as a good warm up event for Derby City since we're so close. It was a lot of fun. A lot of good players came in. We ran a one pocket, a ten ball open, nine ball bar box open, as well as a nine ball bank ring game. Had over fifteen thousand dollars added to all the events in total. A lot of fun. A lot of good players came to hang out with us for the week. Finishing things off with this match here. If you, uh, you're watching this pay-per-view stream, you also have access to the One Pocket, which was uh, a part of the same pay-per-view. So if you missed any of that action, make sure you check it out. A lot of really good matches there. Fedor Gorse played uh, Tony Chohan in the hot seat match. Ended up playing Scott Frost in the finals. Uh, both of those were really good matches. Tony Chohan played John Gabriel at one point during that tournament, uh, also streamed. It was a race to five. He won five to zero in all of about 18 minutes. One of the craziest one pocket matches I've ever seen. He ran four eight and outs doing, uh, doing what Tony Chohan does best. So check that content out. It's on the uh, same link that you're viewing this here. Meanwhile, back to this match, John uh, John breaking and, and once again just not able to get anything going his way. He's uh, faced with a tough shot here. I, I'm not sure if he can even get through to this this two ball. Maybe looking at a push out, which you're always going to take the worst of in that situation. Have a look here. It looks like he can get to some of it. Just a matter of. Where do you go with that ball? He was having a look to see if he could bank it three rails in a way, leaving his cue ball up table, but there's so much traffic through there. He does call three rails on the side, so looking to uh, possibly get this ball down. If it misses, you want to miss long. The ball should dive to the bottom rail from there. Take a look at the path of this three ball off the third rail. Or two ball, rather. Misses it long, which is the shot you wanted. So that's a good shot from John there. Needed that. Uh, wants to maintain control of the table here. And uh, I believe we're going to have a player break from Tyler. So we're going to do the same here in the booth. Um, we will be right back.
Wow, wow, wee wow. What an effort that was from Tyler. Sneaking back into the booth here right on time to catch that shot. So John Mora, difficult rack to navigate here. All the balls in the center of the table. But he has an open shot at the two and uh, desperately needs to work this one out. We are by no means done with this match. We've seen a lot of swings in the score over the last three days. And eight is uh, probably the smallest margin John's had to come back from. So no give up with this guy. I can guarantee you that. Gets that ball down, and uh, middle of the table starts to open up. The further through the rack he gets. Really the last uh, last key shot here is going to be from the five to the six. I think I'd look for him to get just a little bit of angle on the five, roll forward for the six on the side. Seems to be the safest bet. Nine ball kind of hampering shape for the corner pocket. Just a nudge on the eight, has a shot on the six on the side. Plenty of angle where you can travel three rails around to play the seven on the opposite side. Uh, after that, uh, just needs to get the balls down. Reduce his uh, deficit to seven. to play the seven in the corner. I don't mind that. Uh, look at the overhead here. See plenty of uh, plenty of room to, to pop the cue ball to the rail and back out. Good confident stroke there. Mr. Smooth, two balls away here. Get to 62. Johnny Mora, 62, reduces the deficit to 7. Tyler leading, 69. It's really, uh, it's really something you know we can play. We're on uh, 131 racks, and only 7 separate these two. Played a lot of pool, seen a lot of swings in the score over the last three days. It comes all the way down to the end, and, uh, and to be this close is, makes for good entertainment. Definitely enjoyed watching this match. Hope you all have done the same. We'll uh, 
you will have access to replay any of this going forward after the uh, videos get processed you can log in tv.railyardbilliards.com watch that content along with the one pocket event that was streamed here started this uh, past thursday Fedor Gorst was the, the champion there. We should have named the tournament the Fedor Gorst Open. He won all events, with the exception. I won't say he was quite the winner of the Bank Ring game. He did he did win technically, splitting with Earl Age, so not a whole lot better. Fedor's a, a rail yard sponsored player, so we're happy to see it. Doing well in his homeroom. Meanwhile, Johnny Mora hoping to get something going on this break here. Tyler was able to do uh, really well with the break over the last 10 racks or so and, and, and kind of find the speed and angle he needed to hit the balls. John is, uh, I wouldn't say been breaking bad. It's just been inconsistent. He's getting kisses uh, just like there. The four ball was dead in the side pocket. Gets kissed away. Ends up coming up dry. Leaving shot on the one. Thin shot on the one, but uh, definitely one Tyler's going to take on for sure. Just zigzag back and forth and uh, just needs to get the cue ball back to the center of the table. And uh, I don't see any real issues here. May end up playing the 7-8 combination, but the, the eight's close enough. Don't imagine that'll pose any problems. the things Tyler did uh, over these last few racks as well. He just kind of picked up his pace a little bit. Didn't seem to spend as much time studying the shot. It's one thing to look at the angles that you uh, you know you'd want to want to hit, where you want to land with your cue ball, looking at leaves, things like that. But once the shot's decided, that's uh, that's where you don't really want to spend that much time kind of psyching yourself out of. Meanwhile, I, I really did expect Tyler to get that ball down, but just caught it a little bit thick and it hangs up. We are playing on four and a quarter inch pockets, so there's not a whole lot of room for air. The uh, conditions in the room, humidity's higher with some rain that we've had, so. I believe John's gonna be able to get through to this one ball, even if just rail first. Enough, enough of a gap there between the four and the five. Shape is automatic for the two, so this is the kind of breaks that John needs to, to claw back in this match. He's falling a little bit thinner than he would have wanted on the two, but the good thing for John is that the three is uh, close to the side pocket and the four ball's up table, so even if he's below this and going towards the top of the table after slicing the three in the side. He has the six ball close by. You can use that to hold for position on the four. So really all about just making this two ball. Just get it down. You've got some options. And uh, after that, the rest of the rack gets a lot simpler. uses the 10 ball to uh, hold. Now I'm not sure if he's gotten low enough. He may have gotten too low to slice this ball. He's having a look at it. We'll take a quick look at the overhead and see just how, how far ahead of the side pocket this ball is. It's definitely makeable. And like I said, the six ball close by. He'll be able to utilize that to hold for position on the four. It actually plays off of the six. Does not want to have to shoot a combo here, though. Might be what he's faced with. A little bit of a frustration sigh there from John. I don't blame him. It just seems uh, when you're already up against it and things get tougher as you go. But, uh, John is a grinder for sure. He will uh, work this out. He's called the bank shot on the four. I'd look for him to play it uh, sort of as a two-way, play his cue ball over to the right side of the table. Looking for coverage from the 10 ball. So 
having a look to see if he wants to go ahead and cut this ball. You can see just how much of the pocket that the six takes up here. And he elects to, uh, to go back to the bank shot. I don't dislike this shot. Um, you know, he's, he's kind of up against it. Feels like he needs to make something happen. There is an element of safe involved. It's not just a total flyer. He'll play it with the speed to come back up towards the center diamond if he does miss it. Actually plays it with a lot more speed than that. I, uh, not crazy about the, the speed that he played that shot. I think there was a safer way to go about it if he was going to take on the bank shot. But uh, we saw that a couple times this uh, this last day where it seemed like John was maybe just trying to make something extra happen that uh, wasn't always necessary to do. So this is uh, this is going to give Tyler a really good opportunity to pull within five of the match. This the uh, the last shot that requires a, a great deal of attention. Just any combination, you want to make sure you fully decided the speed and uh, what's going to happen with the ball after you combo. But this one's pretty much automatic. Just need to get the eight ball down, which he does. He can elect to uh, just roll the seven in and play the nine ball up table. If he'd like, he could zigzag back and forth. He does have enough angle to go right side rail, left side rail, and back across, but not a big fan of that. You bring in, uh, you know, if you run into the 10 ball, get a little higher than you planned on, side pockets over there. I think the easy thing to do here is just take what you have, shoot the nine ball up table, 10 ball's close. Tyler Steyer pounding that ball three rails. Something that Josh Roberts touched on. He uh, is definitely a fan of moving the cue ball. He uh, you know, has a big stroke, likes to use it. Definitely necessary in some positions. Uh, maybe a little bit extra than is, than is needed. You know, I'm not sure that uh, it was necessary in that, that particular circumstance, but I have to remember too, he's also full of adrenaline right now. Opportunity to let the stroke out. Uh, probably feels pretty good. Suits his eye a little bit better. Needs to take his time on this one. It's uh, you know a ball he expects to make 99% of the time, but uh, one that can be missed if you're not careful. Gets that ball down. Great shot. Tyler Steyer gets to 70 over John at 62. Extends the lead back to eight. He is five games away from closing this match out. Give a shout out to our sponsors while Tyler takes a look at the rack there. We have Q Tech, the uh, best Q makers out there as far as uh, carbon fiber shafts in particular go. Uh, big fan of that myself. Diamond Billiards, we have 30 of their tables here at, uh, at Rail Yard in Louisville. Jam Up Apparel, some of the best billiards apparel in my opinion. They were here with us all week. A lot of great products in. 
Shout out to Cody Myers and Nathan Wallace for uh, running that booth all week. A lot of uh, a lot of the locals here really enjoyed having that opportunity to stock up. Burning Barrel Skill Games popular here as well. Shout out to Michelle Griffin, big supporter of pool here in Louisville. She's a, a local realtor, definitely who you want to talk to if you need anything real estate related in Louisville or Southern Indiana. And uh, just as before, Tyler has really seemed to find a rhythm on this break. He's getting balls down, coming up with a shot on the one in the corner every time. Balls really spread out, just makes for easy runouts. Easy being a relative term, of course. Still has to maintain angles, get the balls down. But uh, just playing with so much confidence right now. It's, we haven't really seen it the entire match until the last, I'd say, you know, seven racks or so. Picked up his pace a little bit. Seems to really be doing good for him. Stroke from Tyler there using uh, stun to uh, power over to the rail and back out. In a great position here, just has to go forward one rail and clear the seven. Might have a little bit too much angle to hold for the corner, so I think you'll see him drag left rail right rail above the side pocket for the seven in the side nine ball over the opposite side pocket oh wow just caught that ball a little bit thick ended up dragging one rail up but uh yeah i didn't didn't expect to see that miss from tyler he's uh Fortunately for him, unfortunately for John, not left anything super easy here. Tim ball cutting off uh, the side of the five he needed to make the ball, so he tries to roll behind the ten. Tyler's going to be able to see as much of this ball as he wants to uh, to put John back in a tough position. You might see him call call this ball cross corner. You can play it as a two way. As long as you miss the bank short, the five ball is always going back to the center center of the bottom rail. Cue ball is always going up table, so he'll have a shot on the seven or possibly coverage from the ten. But at the very least, all he's going to leave is another bank shot for John. That's exactly what he's done. Two rails back to the center of the table. Doesn't get the blocker from the 10, but again, nothing John's going to be able to do offensively from here. Looks like a similar shot again, just trying to Split these balls between the 10 ball, but uh, once again, Tyler has the full five to work with here. I don't know if he has has an angle where he can bank this cross side. It's, it's definitely long. It's just a matter of if he can shorten it enough. 
hasn't called a shot yet. If he doesn't like it, he could bank the five ball two rails up to the top rail, top center of the rail, and cue ball back down, similar to as he did uh, just the, the shot previous, but opposite ends of the table. Does call it cross side and uh, misses just a little bit long. So officially turned over to John Moore. This is his rack to win, rather lose if he's uh, unable to get out here. I don't, I don't think we're going to see that happen. He's got a good angle. He can come three rails up for the seven on the side, close to the five. Even if the nine's blocking some of the pocket, it won't be much of an issue for him. One, two, three, and in a great position, pull back within seven. Been a lot of that today, back and forth. Um, Tyler just recently, over the last hour, kind of pulling ahead by more. John started the day down by three, and after six hours of play, that was still the same margin we had. And, uh, Tyler recently extending his lead to seven at the best time possible for him. or eight rather, as it sits now, about to be seven. So Johnny Mora says, I'm not done yet. 63 to 70 is our score. haven't already appreciate it if you like and follow the rail yard billiards facebook page we have a lot of great events we're planning for 2023 some uh, challenge matches just like this we have in the works tournaments different events a lot of great content we'd like to bring you make sure you don't miss out on that we also have a youtube page we streamed our 10 ball event for free there a lot of good matchups Throughout that event, you can replay those. We'll, uh, we'll get around to splitting up the individual matches, but uh, there's one, one day in particular, uh, the, the Saturday, where we recorded live all day. That video is still on YouTube. Bank Ring Game is at the end of that video, if you'd like to check it out. Had 11 players in that. Billy Thorpe, Skylar Woodward, Louis DeMarco, Robert Frost, Cash Keaton, good young player from the Cincinnati, Ohio area. Northern Kentucky. So rack number 134, John Moore to break. Misses both side balls low. Nothing's going to go down, but uh, have a little bit of a cluster here on the left top rail with the one, two, and four. I don't know if the, the two ball may be wired and if Tyler can get to this, all he has to do is touch the one to make the two. Have a quick look at the overhead camera to see. In that case, it would just be a matter of what happens with the one ball, but he may not shoot this. Yeah, he's just rolling it there. It was a good hit. If he... Uh, if you were to take that on, you could see that they were angled slightly towards the, the left rail, not the pocket. And the way that he was hitting the ball, he was only ever going to push those further to the left rail. So that may be why he elected not to shoot it. And of course, you have to control what happens with the one ball next as well. So decides just to roll forward here. The two ball, I believe, blocks any path for... John to hit this, but he seems to think he can get through to it. Tyler's standing close by recording with his phone, just, just in case. We're going to have a quick review of that. And uh, Tyler gives him the thumbs up, says good shot. So...
Tyler having a look to see if this ball is frozen. Decide what his options are for a return. He'd like to be able to thin this ball and get between the, the four and the rail, send his cue ball down table. I'm not sure if he has enough room to, to do that without hitting the four. One ball was not frozen, so he just thins off of it. It was going to go to the rail automatically, and then uh, just leaving the cue ball close by there. So a little bit of a tricky situation to navigate here at the beginning of this rack. We haven't had a whole lot of these. It's been uh, been a matter of who was able to hit a you know fairly straightforward safety better and gain control of the table, or a, an open table that needs to be uh, run out. That's happened a few times and seen a couple mistakes and missed balls throughout today. A little bit of fatigue setting in at this point. You have to remember these guys have played 133 racks of pool. And that is a lot of energy it takes, a lot of brain power to play at the level that these guys do. I think as long as this one ball stays off the rail, you're going to see these guys just keep chipping at it. When it uh, eventually freezes, someone will have to take the cue ball somewhere else in order to uh, maintain a good hit. Also helps the, the further away this four ball moves. It gives them a little bit more room to, to navigate the safety. Interesting shot choice from John there. I'm not sure what he thought the one ball was going to do. He drew his cue ball straight down table. Maybe he thought it would uh, sort of push through the two ball to the top rail. He would have the three and potentially four blockers. But uh, whatever the plan was, it ended up going across the table and back to leave Tyler a straight in shot here. And he really just needs to make the ball. He can hang there. See, he cut the ball a little too much. I mean, obviously he missed it, but I feel like he was trying to come off the rail too much. He really didn't need to. He could have taken the back cut on the two. He was always going to have his cue ball traveling two rails towards the three. So I think there you just make the ball. Um, there was no need to really try and force anything extra with the cue ball there. I look for John to make this kick shot. More of a matter of what, what he gets with the two ball next. And uh, just as I say that, he kicks long. The other thing he's done is, is made the seven ball much simpler. It was uh, on the point of the pocket, side pocket. He's pushed that down. The six goes easy in the side with the seven ball right next to it. So. This is a uh, another great opportunity here for Tyler, and, and so far here towards the end, he's capitalized on these really well. The exception of uh, one or two at the most missed shots. Always tricky to navigate shape from a, a ball that's so deep in the pocket. See, he just decides to draw straight back to the rail and out, make it a little bit easier to guess cue ball path. 
so important when a ball's in a pocket like that to be conscious of which side of the pocket you're shooting it into. There's there's not a side you could miss it on, but it makes a great deal of impact on what's going to happen with the cue ball next. Tyler having a quick look over the rack, looking at the five ball. It definitely passes the eight. There's, you can drive a truck through there. Not causing much issue at all. It's more of uh, what angle he needs on the five to get to the six. The uh, air shot from John earlier made the seven ball much simpler. So definitely look for Tyler to get out here. He's kind of fallen back into slowing his pace down a little again. I think he uh, he was playing much better when he was getting down on shots a little bit quicker. Not not overthinking near as much, and I think that would serve him well if he could get back in a similar rhythm. Straight back for the five in the corner. It'll be a few draw shots here in a row. He keeps falling a little bit straight where he's having to uh, to use draw. Generally would like to maintain angles into the rail. A little bit easier to use the rails, kill your speed, get a sense of where the cue ball is going to go. Looks like he has enough angle here where he can use top to follow forward one rail. He does. And that's a great shot from Tyler. That's a perfect angle. Just roll forward for the seven down in the corner. Spins back two rails, great shape on the nine. Tyler looking to pull within four games of this match. And he's maintained a uh, seven to eight game lead for the last hour or so, I'd say. Seventy-one to sixty-three. Tyler leads over John. I'm gonna step out of the booth for a quick break. I'll be right back with y'all.
Alrighty, back at the booth here with you, Kyle Ferguson at Rail Yard Billiards in Louisville, Kentucky. Appreciate you all hanging in with us till the end of this match. It's been an awesome one so far. Tyler has pulled within three games of closing this out. Last time they played, uh, Tyler and John was in December, right after the Moscone Cup at Griff's in Las Vegas. John was the winner there. Tyler looking to uh, make his comeback here. He's on a uh, Great roll so far. He's been breaking the balls really well here towards the end. Uh, coming down the home stretch, really just playing with a lot of confidence. It's been a lot of fun to watch. Both balls down to the side pocket. His cue ball does get kissed down table. You can see this one, though, and uh, that's really the only... Only shot of this rack is just getting the one ball down. The three balls hanging in the corner. Made three balls on the break. This, uh, this one ball and then just making sure you fall good on the eight. The nine ball just hampering a little bit there for the shape, but you have the entire right side of the table available to you. So I really think this is the, the only shot he needs Something he's going to put a lot of time and effort into. The rest of it will be pretty straightforward. Having a look to see his cue ball path after cutting this ball to the right. He doesn't want to risk making the three if he doesn't have to. to actually play the three ball. I really thought he cut this ball in. Just a high ball, leave shape on the three. He decides to fire the one ball around the table. It's going to work out just fine for him because his cue ball travels two rails out and straight in on the six in the side. So fortune favors the brave. He knew he could get the three ball down. Versus taking on a tough cut on the one and uh, now looking to close the, the gap between him and the final of this match. Falling uh, just a little bit straight here. He's kind of on that tweener angle where he wanted to go one rail over, he'd have to really force it with stun. I think you'll see him draw all the way up table and back down, which is what he does. Always likes letting that stroke out, Tyler does. Doesn't want to be dead straight here. He'll be able to handle it fine, but a little bit of angle would have served him well to pop out the nine ball. Full straight back, so just needs to make the nine natural shape on the ten. Nine ball is down, Tyler Steyer. Takes a 10-game lead once again over John Mora. 
73 to 63. He is two games away from winning the $80,000 that has been posted in the middle here. This is Kyle Ferguson at Rail Yard Billiards. New pool room that opened this past May. Late May, early June, so not quite a year. Still working on that first one. Take a look at our sponsors while Tyler gets ready to break off here. Appreciate uh, all their support making this event possible. Q-Tech, Diamond Billiards, Jam Up Apparel. If I want to show them some love, let them know you appreciate their support. Makes all this possible. Burning Barrel, Michelle Griffin, and Johnny Brunk Print Services. Go back to the action here. Puts the four ball down. The uh, one ball kissed straight up table, but then bumped by the six to leave Tyler straight in once again. He's, uh, his break has just been exactly what he needed it's one of the things that a lot of people gave him the edge in, in this match because of he has such a powerful 10 ball break uh, wasn't able to really find any consistency with it over the last three days until uh, the last hour or two uh, just been breaking the balls really well wide open table coming up with a shot on the one it's exactly what he needed to pull ahead from john it was really back and forth the entire day john started down three and after six hours of play today he was still down three so a lot of back and forth Tyler eventually pulled away once that break started happening his confidence went up everything started going well for him three ball has plenty of room by the ten getting on the five to get to the six is really the the rest of what's to be done in this rack. Great stroke there, pulling back one rail, spinning out for the five. Has plenty of angle, he can uh, follow this two rails forward. Looks like he may even be drawing if he's shooting on the side, which he is, you know, drawing across the table. And a uh, big miss there from Tyler, just kind of let up on his stroke. Didn't uh, didn't follow through like he typically does there. So John Mora, much needed uh, breath, some table time. Running out of opportunities to put something together here. Needs to uh, get this ball down and, and make some good breaks. Something that's uh, not worked well for him towards the end here. His break has been inconsistent. He's broken them, broke them well at times, and uh, he's uh, it's not necessarily been breaking bad. He just hasn't had the results that he needs. Good shot there. Good speed control. And a couple of options to get to the eight ball. I think you'll see him draw over to the right rail as we look and back out. You can also follow, stun follow two rails and back out. I like the draw here. John Mora, just two balls away, needing to pull the lead down to nine and uh, try to get something going on his break here. John's a fighter. You know, he's been in bad positions before and, and come out the winner, so he's 
He knows what it takes. It's just a matter of if he can put everything together at the same time. He's had a lot of opportunities today that kind of snuck away from him. A couple of missed balls. A couple of safeties that he uh, let Tyler out of. Nonetheless, he gets the 10 ball down. He's still fighting. We are not at the end yet. 64 to 73. John trails to Tyler. Race to 75. Rack number 138, a lot of pool over the last three days, a lot of fun. Sawicki from Poland jumping in the booth here. Hey guys, uh, am I on? Yeah. Okay. Got you with us. Yeah. So, coming down to the end here, uh, Tyler's starting to look pretty good, huh? Oh, Ooh, bad kiss there. Bad kiss. Yeah. Yeah. Goes that's... from bad to worse for John. Yeah. He's not been able to get anything to go his way here at the end. The house of cards. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a tough game, tough game for uh, Johnny. But, you know, Tyler went to the same thing the previous set. Sure. And, uh, yeah, he had, I think he, I think he, it, it got to him at one point that Tyler got away with a lot of shots. Yeah. Uh, like when he was 59, 61 down, he missed that seven ball. Yep. It was a straight in shot, you know? He, yeah. He, he, you know, it's not, I don't mean he dogged it, but. Sure. Took it for granted, you know. Sure, yeah. I think from that point on, he was done. Yeah, yeah. It's tough, you yeah. know. Whenever you're getting down to the end, and if, and the other thing Tyler's done today that he hasn't done the the last previous uh, previous two days is that his breaks come together, especially wow. here at the end, right? Yeah, and it's he, unreal. the runouts have been there for him, whereas yeah. the the runouts that Johnny faced, it's not ones that he didn't expect to make, but. Mm -hmm. But he had to work a little bit more, yeah. you know. The, the uh, what what Tyler's looking at here is like every ball leads to the next. He's got wide open middle of the table where he can move around. Are they? Are they? Did they discuss anything about pattern racking? They did, and it actually came up uh, yesterday at one point. Tyler mentions to John that he felt like he was pattern racking the balls. John let him know, you know, he was just throwing them in there, and okay. uh, John was a good sport about it. He ended up moving the balls around. He said, you know, it wasn't anything he was intentionally doing, okay. but. But yeah, there is no pattern racking uh, that was specified. So yeah, easy layout here, right? Um, seven yep. hanging, so shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, Tyler in great shape to get to the hill here. Yeah. So what time we got? Ten. Yeah. So they've been playing for. Seven hours. Yep. I yeah, started at three o'clock today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So come. I think he's gonna go two rails, right? Middle of the table somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Just like a oh, middle right. left a ball. Left, uh, yeah. Left hand spin. Oh. Ball. Ball naturally kicks out that direction. Okay. I did. I don't think he expected to come near. Yeah, I think he caught it. I think he caught it a little, a little, thin. little thinner. Yeah, yeah, and it uh, just spun a little closer to the eighth than he expected, but yeah. still not a problem. You know, nine's close to the side pocket. He'll just hang there, shoot the nine in the side, and roll up for the ten in the corner. Yeah. 
So he needs one after this, <laughs> and like they always say, John needs someone else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the one he believes in. That's right. So 138 racks played. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you got a stats thing going if we would like, you know, keep scoring. Yeah, yeah, it's something uh, I think going forward we'll try to maybe get somebody that can kind of keep a closer eye. Of course, mm -hmm. we've, we've had different commentators in and out. And, yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's something that would be cool to kind of see. Yeah, the TPAs and stuff. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tyler Steyer has reached the hill 100 not 100, no. 74, 74 racks, 139, 139 racks. racks total. That was what I meant to say. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, a lot of pool, and uh, especially here at the end, Tyler's confidence has just been on a different level um, than, yeah, it, the, than it was. After that, after those couple misses, he, I, he, I, I think he started feeling really good. Yep. Because he made some monster shots at the breakdown, everything. Everything came together. Yeah. But, I mean, either way, no matter how this turns out, it's just been a fantastic match to yep. watch. Yeah, a lot of momentum swings. Both yep. guys playing good and playing. Momentum uh, swings was, uh, first yeah. day was, was, was oh, crazy. Yeah, wild. Second day, Johnny came out strong. Yep. Yeah, unfortunately, there has to be a winner. Sure, yeah. So let, let's look at the break from the side. I like this angle. You can see impact a little bit more in my opinion. Yeah, a big break there. He's just got it dialed in. Yeah, he's, he's going to be a lot straight in, but I don't think that will be a problem. No, I think, uh, I think we might see the yeah. last of this match here. Yeah, no, well, could be a could be a miracle, but I'm, 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 I'm yeah. pretty positive that yeah. Tyler will, will, will finish this one. Yeah, I mean, really, this is the shot here, and it's kind of been that yeah, way. Where I think, I think it's the, the first shot is his toughest shot of the entire wreck, right? Yeah. He's going to go for the side, I'm guessing. I would say two rails. Wow. Oh, wow, just overcut that ball a little bit. Did I just jinx him? Uh, yeah, I think we got him, didn't we? It looked wow. like he was trying to draw that three rails in a round. Um, not sure. I think he was a little bit overconfident. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I like just a high ball there, yeah, two rails out. A yeah. little left. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, yeah. But wow. definitely, uh, I don't know. Josh talked about that a little bit. Tyler yeah. just seems to really want to like let that let stroke go. Ball, you know, yeah, little let little it bit. dance a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Josh, Josh just nodded. Yeah. Here on the left. <laughs> okay, so Johnny does have a problem on the four ball. He's going to take care of it straight away, and yeah. Yeah, I think he's okay here. Yeah. He'll go forward to the top rail and back down. Yeah, he needs some inside here, right? Yeah, maybe a touch. It depends on how how much he can get through the two ball from here. Mm. Um, if he's able, if he's thick enough on it where he follows forward, it'll just be high. If it's uh, shooting out to the right a little, he can check it off the rail with with inside, yeah. which is what he did. Oh, Good. A little bit. Yeah, I right. did. Really oh, bounced. He might wow, be in trouble here. Wow! Wow! Gets a bump on the eight, so he's okay. That was a big bounce. Yeah, it sure was. Maybe just a little bit of adrenaline run in there maybe, in the, in Johnny's or, back arm. Or, or maybe, maybe uh, you never know. Some funny bounces because a little chalk on the cue ball or whatever. Sure, sure. Yeah, he's got a shot. Not a gimme. He has to draw back uh, to the end rail here. Backwards. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's just so hard to put a good stroke on the ball whenever you're uh, faced with what he is right now. Okay, Tyler's gonna have a shot on the side. Yeah, I think it's Johnny's. Uh... Yeah. So, what do you do here? Do you go just plain ball? Yeah, it's to tough. To I mean, middle of the table. Yeah, I really like to draw or uh, you know kind of stun this ball, but he's on the rail, so he yeah. doesn't have doesn't have that available to him. Just Playing ball and then like just gonna follow it a little bit and go back and wow, yeah. that, that that rail yeah it's it's bouncing in it that rail yeah just had a little bit of outside English on there to uh, spin back the only thing he's done is he's kind of covered the seven ball up a little bit so he's having a look here to see if he yeah. were to draw underneath and try to bump it a little hmm. 
on his way to the six. Bump it, yeah. He needs to bump it on the full on the left side, I think. Yeah. Or brush it, you know. Yeah, yeah, towards the pocket. Oh, you missed it? Just misses it. Came out good. Hmm. Take a look at the overhead on this screen over here and see how much room. Yeah, there's really not a lot of room, and he's he can't. I think it does go by the set or the ten, though, doesn't it? It does go by the ten, and it yeah you can get that with the cue ball on 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 yeah like said, the top side of the ten ball. If you, if you like, you know, I think maybe he just likes to bump the nine, the ten now. Sure. Oh. Oh, he's in the corner. Wow. wow a little bit of drama here Too at the much. end. <laughs> Too good of a stroke, I think. He really did. That deep, ball, that ball, uh, yeah, yeah zips straight back. Yeah. Oh, hit the point. Ah, uh, okay. So Josh did said he catch the point. point? Yeah. I was wondering that. I thought his only uh, chance for for something going wrong there is if he hit the point the other way, coming out yeah, the other point, yeah, you know, yeah. and it stops him from yeah. coming down. But yeah, but yeah I must have caught the, uh, oh, the other God side. Is, so. God, he's still alive. Yeah. Nonetheless, we still have pool to play. Yeah, he's still. He's still alive. Maybe take a time out. Maybe, maybe, maybe regroup, whatever. And then yeah, I mean, this is a little bit of a back. little bit of a tester here. I mean, you're frozen to the rail. The guy oh, needs one no, game. No, I don't want to shoot it. No, he's good. <laughs> All right. So Johnny, Johnny. Uh, John's still alive. Johnny's still. Uh, Sixty-five to seventy-four. Number 140. Will this be the one Tyler is able to close the match out on? So a total of 150 racks possible, or uh, 149 rather. Let's look at Johnny's break from this angle. Let's see if he uh, can hit him as square as uh, Tyler has been doing. Ooh. Kind of a flat cue ball. Yeah. He didn't hit him. Timing is way off. Yeah. Okay. A little bit funny, though. The uh, the middle of the table is kind of clogged up, which makes it difficult to move your cue ball around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I think if you, if you can get a good angle on that two ball, you could just fall. Yeah, well, no. No, he can't get there. So maybe go for the same pocket go in between the balls yeah you can so i think he can drag this ball if you take your cue ball a little bit of draw towards the first diamond you're going to pop two rails out he could shoot the two in the side the problem is where the three is you have to play it in the bottom right he's he could come all the way around two rails like you said to shoot the two in the same pocket yeah because he likes to move the cue ball right like sure. this coming in between the balls yeah but you bumped it and got away with it so yeah Still a lot of work to do here, though. He, he, Six he, ball. Yeah, he, he, he actually he actually uh, did uh, nudge that six ball against the eight, so he will have to work on that one. Yeah. Inter five. Interested to see how Tyler navigates this rack. Uh, all the outs that he's made for the really the last day have been, uh, you know, kind of wide open. Watch that, outside pocket. Yeah, but that, we have that another rail, scratch. That rail is doing something funny. Wow. I'm serious. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I, I told Kyle. Yeah, I told Kyle maybe it's some chalk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because that, that bounced really funny. Okay, so Johnny, you're back again. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. Josh, Josh called the the path they're taking with their cue balls. 
you know, towards pockets. I mean, that, that, that can happen. Yep. So again, Johnny uh, Johnny Moore with the chance to run out here, but not a straightforward rack by any means. Seems to be uh, a lot of what he's been faced with. So what do you do with the six ball? I believe it goes in the top left corner. But the matter is, uh, you know, can maintaining get, an angle, angle on the five. Angle? Yeah. Yeah. So we can take a look. It does go. It does go in if two you, pockets. If, if you get there, yeah. And he has he has a good shot on the four to, to get whatever angle he needs on the five, so I'd look to see him uh, play for that. I think at the top left, as we look, and he's falling a little straight for that. So now we're maybe talking about the side pocket. Yeah, I think he's gonna just draw it, just past the seven, stay in the in, the, in that line to go for the side. Yeah. Yeah, good shot, good stroke. Mm, can he hold this? I don't think he needs to. Yeah, I think he's he's thick enough to where he can just no. roll this forward center table. Yeah, well, it, well, it's, it's, it's a dangerous shot to just dead, dead, dead weight roll this, right? Well, sure, yeah. I mean, he may go forward to the bottom rail and up. Yeah. Um, it's kind of his choice. It, it really depends on just how thin or thick he is. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Unless you're right behind the shot. Yeah, he, he just rolled it. Yeah. So he's a little he thicker on it. Straight on the seven ball, right? Oh. Yeah, yeah, he'll just follow forward here and play the eight in the side. I think he's gonna stun this. Because he has a tiny angle. He just moved the cue ball like, you know. This yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of stunned forward a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. so. Can't really see if you can move the cue ball with a little bit of right hand side to back to the. From the one rail to the to the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah for can, sure. Yeah. yeah, the angle's sometimes deceiving, right? Sure, yeah. yeah. Okay. I like to draw this without rail. Don't know what he's gonna do. Yeah. Yeah. So straight in on the ten ball, and Johnny pulls back one back, needing eight. Yeah. You know, you do that. Uh, do that enough times, you might just get there. <laughs> yeah. Get enough, uh, enough ball and. I was gonna uh, say, of course, you don't want to have to rely on a scratch every every no, rack from no. Tyler Steyer. No, he needs a well, he needs a couple of uh, a couple of packages. Yeah, yeah. At the very least, control the table. You know, if you can get a ball down on the break, yeah, have, have he, a look at the one. He, he needs just something on the break. Yeah, yeah. I think at this point, when when, when you recognize you, your break's not working the way you're expecting it to work, you need to adjust something, right? Right, right. I started breaking with my uh, playing cue in the bar box. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. because the break uh, it was too hard with mm -hmm. the break cue, and you don't need that hard of a break on the, on the bar box. Sure. Mm -hmm. And it started working, controlling more. Yeah, yeah. Got a little pop. Uh, you didn't play anything, right? I didn't, no. There was just a, a lot going on here with the stream and the brackets yeah, and yeah. kind of managing everything. Yeah. And, you know, it was our first year doing the, yeah. the tournament, too. I wanted to make sure I was kind of on top of everything yeah. as much as I could be, of course. Yeah, I had the same thing. I did I did actually enter all my tournaments that I organized. Mm -hmm. I ended up regretting it because, <laughs> yeah. you know, you, you're focusing on everything else sure, that happens yeah. around you. Yeah, I really wanted to play. I had plans to maybe play in the 10 ball. Okay, um, yeah. But, uh, but, yeah, it's just a lot going on here, yeah. so. We have the Derby City Classic starting this Friday. I'll get to go out and play in that. That'll nice. be a little vacation for me. It'll be, it'll be good fun. That's a better break. 
Yeah, he hit those really good. Got the two ball down, three ball. Doesn't see the one ball. He's yes, the he eight does. travel. Yep. Right, just what the doctor ordered for Johnny Mora. Yeah, he's uh, he's got the four ball. A little bit funny to only you know hit the one plain ball. But I think, and also think he he needs to jack up a little bit because of that four ball. Or can he just put a short bridge on the on the table? What do you think? Yeah, I I think he'll I think he'll go for the shorter bridge. Um, I don't know. He could bridge over top of it. Yeah, but then the shot makes yeah a lot tougher, right? Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna old bridge over the four. Yeah, makes makes the shot a lot tougher. But he can, if he can get back to the middle of the table, he's, he should. Oh, he played safe. Wow. Oh, what a thin hit that was. <laughs> he barely moved it. <laughs> I think I thought he went for it. Yeah, I'm. I'm not a big. If you're gonna play safe there, I'm, I don't know that I'm a big fan of. Yeah, hey, he, of the if way you're not he, confident, I yeah, understand. Yeah. Maybe maybe you know take a step back and maybe like you know let Tyler. It was always going to be tough to have, you know, he was really playing to get behind one ball, the six ball. Yeah. And if you don't get there, you're kind of turning control over to Tyler. It is, but you also don't want to sell out like this No, oh, I table. get it. I'm not saying you had to shoot at the ball, yeah. but I think yeah. something that maybe just had a little bit of a built-in insurance policy. And then he makes it. You know, because Tyler's going to shoot that dead nuts. <laughs> of course, you can't legislate for that, but. Yeah. Yeah, you know, maybe banking the one to the center diamond on the, the top rail or something, where if he does see it, it's it's something a little bit funnier. Yeah, uh, that, that that hook behind the six ball was, was, was tough. Was yeah, it? yeah, for sure. Yeah, so he goes for the side, or does he... Uh, um, yeah, yeah he I think, yeah, yeah, he just wants to miss, miss the six ball, draw up above it, and shoot the six inside. That uh, was well, the five balls next here, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Missed that one down there. Yeah, I mean, really, yeah, kind can, of just a center rolling ball. It's naturally going to go past the six ball. Yeah, if you had a fin, you always have that six that will stop the cue ball. Mm -hmm. You can just, oh, he's going to draw it. Yeah, like you said. I don't know. He did roll it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just, you. when the ball's that close to the pocket, you can control how thick you're hitting it, which mm -hmm. controls the angle. It's, you know. Yeah. Easy just to roll that cue ball where you want it to, yeah. to be. I believe the seven ball does go by the nine, so not much of an issue there. You think? Yeah, yeah, I think it yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, from there, yeah, you can see. Yeah, it's gonna go inside here and stay on that side of the, the table. Yeah, so this is the uh, the second, I would say, opportunity Tyler's had. You know, real opportunity to close this match out. Yeah. I, I really thought he was going to get there on the first one. but uh, And on the second one. Yeah. And on the third, yeah. Yeah, he needs to draw it is for the side, I think. Uh, yeah. Only thing you want to watch there, you know, the ten uh, balls. Yeah, yeah, the adrenaline's high. You don't want to over amp this. No. Had a little bit of angle where it wasn't going to be a problem. Could come towards the ten. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is uh, this has got to be right, the I'm end here. I'm curious what his reaction will be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's uh, worked hard to get here for sure. Yeah, you think you're gonna see a big cheer and a big uh, sigh of relief? <laughs> What do you think? I agree with that for sure. Even if you don't see it, it's happening. <laughs> and, uh, what he does makes a tumble. Stone Cold walks up to Johnny, shakes his hand, and walks away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm actually really curious. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are two balls away from closing out Tyler Steyer versus John Mora. $80,000 in the middle. Two balls here for eighty grand. How do you like it? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's gonna be no matter. This is the end right here, folks. Yeah, it is. Yeah!
Tyler Steyer taking down Johnny Mora. What a great match that was. And, yeah, uh, it was. Appreciate you hanging out with us here, Martin. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was, uh, it was, uh, it was fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, great I match. Got, I, I got to, I got to uh, commentate with uh, with Josh. Yeah, yeah. I, I always like Josh's commentary when I listen to it in the one pocket and then, uh, absolutely at the, the Acrostats booth. So yeah. uh, it was it was a fun it was fun uh, to do that. Yeah, and we'll for be sure. back. Yeah, we'll for be sure. back for sure next month, next year if you're uh, if you absolutely do it annually. Yeah, so. definitely plan on that. We'll uh, we'll leave the stream up here for a little bit. We got a lot of good players in the area. I don't know if anything's gonna pop up here. See if there's any fun fun pool to bring y'all but in the meantime really appreciate y'all hanging out with us this is uh kyle ferguson martin sawicki josh at, roberts josh roberts josh off the side say something here to the people yeah at rail yard billiards <laughs> josh says see y'all next see time y'all next time <laughs> rail yard billiards in louisville kentucky come hang out with us a little bit if you're in the area and uh we'll talk here soon